what's on my mind. Welcome to episode 45 of the award-winning combat sports podcast, The Boxing Show. With me, your host, Rob Tebbett. As always, I'd like to remind everybody to please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn your notifications on for more boxing content. Now that's out of the way, I'm joined by the usual twosome of Mr. Barry Jones and Mr. Andy Clark as we look ahead to this weekend's showdown between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. How are we doing, chaps? Yeah, good. good yeah, yeah, good. Recording ahead of time, so we're not going to have any reviews for, for we should have done last live from Saudi. Actually. We should have, but I'm not going to Saudi. But you don't need to be on it. That's what I was trying to say. Like, <laughs> you, you, and, and you don't do no offense. And I'm looking at you. Like you know, you. Well, if I'm not, if I'm not you, you get Chris what's his name, the big well, that's not, I don't care, it's cruise of a champion, the posh kid, <laughs> the, the gentleman. Man. The, the gentle the gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a real issue. He's gonna batter me anyway this evening if he can find me. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, be too elu- you'll be too elusive. I you'll was laughing fine. like when you were doing the, the intro. I thought, remember you say, when you say like and subscribe, I always used to go like this in the background. No, don't like and subscribe. That's why we don't no, pan no. to you on the wide shot anymore. Yeah. We keep we keep you off there. How you doing, Andy? Yeah, very well, thanks. Good. I mean, you're technically when this goes out in Saudi, so True. Yeah. True. I go on the Saturday. When you you get you out on Friday, yeah, I'm, in, I'm in Abu Dhabi on the Friday, and then I fly on the Sunday afternoon to Riyadh. Yeah, so I, do, I got a show on Saturday night in the, in the Abu Dhabi, which is nice and lovely. It's on, on a Lynx course, fantastic. It looks beautiful. It looks like Eddie Hearn's back end. No, it does. <laughs> it, it looks like it has that sort of feel about it. It's really good. But uh, and there's loads of, and there's a Uganda on there. I don't know if that show, but but I mean, the last time I did in January, this kid boxed really good. But there was loads of Ugandans, loads of them, and they were wicked. I mean, it was one of the best crowds. There was only like a thousand people there, maybe not even that, maybe. But they made such a noise, a real carnival atmosphere. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, hopefully. Another thing, though, I have to say about it. Okay. It was freezing. What, in Abu Dhabi? It was lovely. The weather was lovely. And then you got to about like 7.30 at night when the, the sun disappears. The temperature drops. I mean, literally, I mean, it was absolutely freezing. Yeah. So I'm gonna People say. always talk about that, like in the in deserts, don't they? It's like either the desert heat or the desert cold. Yeah. So there's, like, there's never just normal weather. It's really easy to get caught out by. It. I I did um, I did a job there this, in in the December, and the same thing happened. Yeah. And and I wasn't expecting it at all. By the time this goes out, that show would have already happened. So um, yeah. yeah. Hope you had a good time, Barry. Yeah, it was a great time. A really good time. A good show. Let's not mess good, with the space good, time good continuum too much. Show. This is going to okay. get completely Every, out of Everybody knows we like oh, to do oh, it. Oh, 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 in that revenue. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Don't worry. Don't you'll go look into the Francis. Anyway, fight. anyway, anyway. Francis and Garnu versus Anthony Joshua. Andy, gonna come to you first. If you'd have said to me three months ago, or however long it was, no, six months ago, not three months ago, not December the twenty-fifth. God, the year's getting away from us. Anyway, that we would be seeing Anthony Joshua versus Francis and Garnu, I'd have wondered what went wrong. So, what went wrong, Andy? How did we end up with Anthony Joshua? against Francis Ngannou it and also b- 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 how am I excited by it as well like that's another reason well no I am as well and, <laughs> yeah. and, and I think and I think we're right to be because it's an extraordinary situation when you have somebody completely new just arrive on the scene everybody felt like they knew who the players were everybody actually involved would have felt like they knew who their rivals were it's incredibly rare in any sport it's unheard of really I can't think of another example where somebody just appears and catapults himself into the mix in a way that he has. Because that performance against Fury, okay, it is quite difficult to measure exactly how good he is off the back of that because Fury was poor that night. But at the same time, Ngarni was also an awful lot better than people thought he would be. And what seems to make complete logical sense to me ahead of this second fight is that off the back of those 10 rounds against Fury, surely... And Garni will be a lot better in his second fight than he was in his first. I mean, that to me just makes that's just rational. That's just that's just sense. 
and that's exactly what his trainer uh, said to me at the at the launch press conference he said look we look at that fight against fury and we feel like we should have got the decision we definitely could have got the decision but it was still in many ways a win for us but we look back at it with some regrets because we feel like we could have put our foot down we could have been a bit more ambitious we could have gone for it more because you're worried about the 10 threes it's all new what's your gas tank like all the rest of it but we feel like we could have done more and we won't be making that mistake again they feel like they'll be much much better the second time around in this second fight against Joshua and as I say that that's kind of unimpeachable logic it's difficult to argue with that it's amazing really that, that we've ended up with this but I am like you I'm 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 really looking forward to it because I think it's really really possible that once again we'll end up underestimating him that people will end up underestimating him and think okay he did really well against Fury but forewarned is forearmed Joshua now knows that he needs to take this guy seriously and I'm sure he will be taking him seriously but I think they will look at Ngarni and feel like there probably isn't that much more to come a lot of the discussion I've seen around this refers to his performance against Fury almost in terms of it being not a freakish one-off but in terms of him unlikely to be able to get any better but but I think it's perfectly possible that he'll be a lot better and that even though we've already seen this film we might just see it again Barry um we all sat here and were were shocked I think it's fair to say after after Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngani back in October how much of it was Francis Ngani being better than what we expected how much of it was Tyson Fury <coughs> having an off night boxing poorly and how much does that fight impact on how you see this upcoming fight first of all I think was it an off night for Fury or has there been a slow decline since Wilder 2 which was for me uh, that was February 2020 I think the anniversary a couple of days ago yeah, yeah. Was, it, was his last wow. was his last really good performance not win performance this, the third fight was a was maybe a better win because he's but i mean it was a better fight to watch but what the performance one him wasn't better and the other fights he's had in between have, have not been quite gimmies but he's just boxed within himself and because he's been the guys who he's boxed haven't been up to his level same <laughs> and gander wasn't up to his level but even if he was poor even if he has the decline the worst version of tyson fury before that fight we all would have thought would still deal with the guy who's never boxed before. Forget how good he is in his own in his own genre, and forget how much of a super athlete he clearly, obviously is, and how much of a man mounted he, he by the way he is because he's huge. He makes Joshua look skinny. That's how big he is. He, he's still never done it before, and he's a guy who's done it all his life and at the highest level, and, and is the flag bearer for our division, our our sport in in the in the in the flag bearing division. So we should have played with him. I mean, all week I was saying like it's not it's not if he can win it's how he wins the reputation of the sport you know really lies on him doing a job impressively not not what Mayweather did to McGregor and hold him up you know for the for you know, to tease a rematch so we're going to another 100 million which never happened but I thought that's what he, he was doing this is like this is a, he should just go out there and put it on him straight away and make him see what it's like when he, when he, he takes a punch from a guy who knows how to punch not strike not punch with the means to do something else more more maybe more dangerous with that with the MMA stuff just the punch is the thing you do do to finish you off clean the punches which is what they can throw but he looked awful and, and again who didn't do all the mistakes he made he, all the things he did in the MMA bring that right foot forward when he throws a big right hand you know with obviously it was designed to get close to grapple grapple is that the word yeah it's close okay yeah he didn't do anything he kept his shape really well he looked a better boxer but I think, and I'm not taking him. I'm not taking him lightly now because you have to give him. It's like like Andy said, you still he's still hard to judge how good he is and where he is. He's only had one fight. However good he did that one fight, it's still only one fight. You, you, know, you need you need um, a few fights before you can really have a real assessment of how good somebody is. I feel you can't just see him once. I, I mean, you can't. Or they can't just have one fight. You can just see him once. Go if you know if you know their their reputation. But if he has no reputation in the sport and you've only you've only done it once, how can you judge how good he is? But you have to say that he can do stuff because he just boxed the arguably the best heavyweight on the planet. I just think against Joshua, he's going to have somebody who's in front of him. So you think theoretically that's going to make it an easier night for him because the guy's in front of him. But you can have a guy in front of him whose hands are high. So even though even though there's a person to hit, there's not a there's not a clear target to hit. Where Fury 
though he's a far away from you quite often when he's fit he gets that judgment of distance really well his hands are low he offers you the target and I say this all the time within within that with where the brilliance comes he also makes mistakes throughout his career he's made mistakes fury with things like that and being dropped a few times but that's okay because he knows how to get up and win but in with the, with offering you the target inviting you to hit him that's where the brilliance comes when he spins you on a sixpence where he throws all the combinations where he can you know, make you miss make you pay with ease and look fantastic but when you're not fit and you're not sharp or, th or the guy surprises you with a long reach or he boxes but he does things you don't expect you get that wrong and then you're an easier target to hit even though you're more fleet footed Joshua will be hands high in and out with his feet like and he, and he showed that against Wallin I think he got that little bit of a rhythm back again which will bode well if if he believes in the jab like he did in the last fight that's going to be an important weapon for him because he's coming up against an Ngannou I think I don't know the statistics but looks like he got a longer reach yeah he does he's got yeah. I think his reach is, is two inches shorter than Fury's Ngannou oh there you go then yeah so yeah. but it's but if Joshua gets the feet right with the in-out movement he will be able to jab him and if he can do that Ngannou might have someone in front of him which might feel like okay I got a target to hit but if a guy can block and counter or can make you miss in and out without dancing around too much you're not dictating the pace like he, he was walking fury down he didn't have to really get no he actually his footwork was really good i thought but i think against against joshua you might have somebody who's, who's with that in and out movement it's going to make he's going to be finding hard to set himself which is going to make his breathing irregular which is going to make him tire quicker i feel he's going to gas out with a, thinking he's going to have more success but actually, I think he's going to have less success and, and start to panic with the guy in front of him going bam, bam, bam with that big heavy left hand. And if Joshua can stay disciplined, then I I really fancy him to get the stoppage and sort of midway. And so I don't think he'd have to go massively long. And that's taking into account that all that, that Ngannou won't, won't, know how to dic won't know how to cope with the with the, with the the rounds. Mm. You know, he does those five minute rounds. It's, but it's a different it's a different it's a different way of doing it when you're not dictating the pace at the box of someone else's pace with power that's very difficult to cope with but if he can jump on joshua early really early and make him panic which we know he can you no know, especially because he's been there before when he gets hit if he gets hit on top of the temple again like he did against ruiz that'll flood back all that panic signs and he'll revert back to the fight that we've seen for one, two, three, four fights after Ruiz, I think, even though the, the Uzik box, he boxed quite well against Uzik, but he tried to box and too much. He needs to have strength in his work, like he showed his last fight, like he showed in the in the finish for the Hellenius fight. He's only shown it in, in a fight, in a really one fight and a, and 40 seconds of a round. That's all he's shown an improvement from. Let's get that. He looked an improved fighter, Joshua, but it's only for that much time. So we don't know if that's, if that's, if he's back to where he was, believing in himself. Or whether there are still questions, but I think for Ungan, he has to ask those questions really early, and sort of like not gamble, as Tundi would say, empty the tanks in. No, but I think I think he has to go a bit like that. Just go for it now. Put pressure. Yeah, I'm going, like with Fury, you can before be a little bit more thoughtful because he's not really a massive concussive puncher. Joshua has been more no a, a real the, the Joshua that we all fell in love with, is a guy who's root one for root one with intelligence as well. With it, I thought. He's always looking to finish you, but behind a good structure. I think that structure is going to cause and gain problems. Where a lot, I think a lot of people think with that in being in front of you like this is going to make a guy to be able to fire back easier. I just think when you don't have a big target to hit, it, you're looking, you're trying to find the, the clear shot, and maybe he will. I don't know. Maybe the, the unorthodox of his work might work for him, but I, I he, had, he he kept the structure quite well. And then when you when you when you teach someone to box, I'm babbling here, so stop when you want to. When you teach them in the box, you teach them the basics really well. So do the fundamentals, but also when you go up against a boxer who's made his career out of doing the fundamentals, and that's what Joshua is. He does the fundamentals really well. Hands are always high, elbows are always tucked in tight. Everything comes off that jab or that double jab right hand when he was at his at his best. And the movement in his feet in and out, he get that good rhythm to his work. He slides more now because he's a bit heavier, but still that that in and out movement's going to work for him. Trying to match someone who's done it, who can do it naturally all their life, into someone you've just learned. You're not going to be better than him at that. So against someone like Fury, it's different because Fury is a better all-round natural boxer, a more talent than, than than Joshua, but he does things off the script. So with that, you can do the structural things a bit better because he, he allows you that because he don't mind because he wants you to make him. He wants you to do stuff, but when he's not on form, he doesn't look so good. So I'm expecting Joshua to walk right through. <laughs>
<laughs> like, I, I, but I think you, I think logically, you have to feel that way. I don't see how you cannot. I mean, you got, you got to go and get him. You got to give him his, his you no, know, he is dangerous, obviously, and you have to give him his, you no, know, his, his due rewards for all what he did against Fury. But still, he's still a novice. He is, however, what he did now, one fight, he's still a novice. I know great people do great things, and he might be a great athlete. He might be clearly, he obviously is, and he might just be one of those guys who's who's an enigma. By the way, you can only you could only do this in the heavyweight division. Yeah, no I other agree, weight division I agree with that. would be able, would they be able to go to the highest level? And he was ve- he never he never won the Fury fight. And I, I was I was explaining to someone the other day who thought he won. And when I said he never, they looked at me and went, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about." And I realised maybe I do know what I'm talking about, but asked me to explain it. And I said, "Well, if you watch the sit at home and watch the fight just to enjoy it, then." Ungano wins because all the big moments were his. He gets the knockdown and all the any any sort of highlight moment of the fight really belonged to him. But when you judge around, as we say this every week, don't we? When you judge around, when you judge a fight round by round, and you break it down like that and just worry about what's going on in that particular round with no n- no residue from what happened in the last round or what might happen in the next, you no know, taking that on to the next round, then Fury wins. But he still, but he still, he still only scrapes over the line. That's the truth. All this, you have uh, some some people when people who do my job went crazy about this is a robbery straight away. That's just the Mayweather syndrome where if he doesn't win massively, then he's lost the fight. He he won the fight, but it was too close to call, and he should be embarrassed at his performance. He should be embarrassed that he allowed a novice to come in. Unless Ngannou becomes out, comes out it turns out to be the greatest athlete who's ever lived, then you can't be embarrassed with that because you've been in the presence of greatness. But when you're saying your greatness, I'm the greatest then you have to be embarrassed by what happens. And, and I just think, you know, Joshua doesn't have that weight of expectation on his shoulders. He, I think everyone thinks he's going to win, but he hasn't got that, he hasn't got that thing on his back anymore with, with the pressure of you can't lose a fight ever again because people are half expecting him to get beat. People think he get beat because if Ngannou, I was talking to Dan Hardy, my mate Dan, and like, you know, he's a real intelligent bloke and understands his sport and understands a bit about enough about our sport. And you know, and he was even before that fight. He never gave Ngannou a chance. He said, "You got to respect his power." And what he told me, what he did tell me, is it's, it's not just power in his sport when they got the smaller gloves, and people are not used to taking punches as well as you are. You guys are. He generally has like touch you pretty to see power. So that's enough to say he's generally a hard hitter. All this machines when he hit the machines and he go to nine thousand mm. points. Oh, that's bollocks! Like I don't believe it. Like, that's just technique. That is a, a, a certain machine. I could probably do. Something to something half decent with that, but I think with with when it comes to in the ring, he he knew he was up against it. And he knows he's up against it for this fight as well, but he did say he has that that previously power with either hand, anywhere he hits you, so you have to respect that. Again, with that is to worry that Joshua does over respects it and clams up, and if he does that, he's in trouble. What he has to do is he has to keep Ngannou second guessing. The, the, a thought behind him, reacting to him. There you go. He has to be. He has to make Ngannou a reactive fighter, but never give him enough space to steal your ground like like Fury did. So you in and out with the feet, you jab, make him react, but you step out, you step straight back in, make him pay every time he make he misses. And yeah, and if, and and when he gets close, don't wrestle him because he's naturally stronger than you anyway. I would have thought, and uh, he might just snap your neck by accident. No, pff, who knows, isn't it? But I, I think. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna Joshua and hurt him early, like I said, like I said four times already in the last three minutes, I think he could. I think you know it, it, we see that panic again. It's a real fight, so it has intrigue. I think I'm right. I'm looking forward to it. Not just because I'm working. I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But I am looking forward to it. Now. Hey, yeah. I will. Oh. I am because of what's happened before, and, and this division is the most unpredictable of all divisions, where the best, the best, are, are, you know, don't being the best and being mediocre is not that much of a journey well this is one of the reasons why i'm really looking forward to the fight based on particularly based on what we saw in the fury fight where and we've had this conversation certainly we've had versions of this conversation on here and versions of it off but we'll go for the one on here where in the heavyweight division if you can punch you got good chin you got good engine you're calm under fire they're things that we all saw in fury and garnu from and garnu you're not a million miles off. Like, I mean, how, does that transcend to beating Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder? We don't know. But it, it's enough to make you competitive whereby in other divisions, as you've just mentioned, it may not I, be I, I've said, I, disrespectfully, I've always said, 
because that if you can throw if you can if you can throw a one two left hook, you're world class as a heavyweight. It's it's a bit pedantic, I know that it is, but I mean it's sort of true. But the difference is the power. That's what you have to give them their respect. I, I, I do slag them off because they earn so much money, you know, compared to other other weight divisions where you get much more exciting fights, I feel. But they get nowhere near the same amount of money because they're little. And not because of me, and this is not me, but I mean other fight like like uh, uh, Chocolatito. Uh, Derek Chisora is more than him. You know, that just makes no sense to me. I presume he's earned more than him. Yeah, or even if it's, it shouldn't even be close. To Derek's a, no, Derek's a good, tough, bad man. But Chocolatito's a great, a great, who's beautiful to watch, who's, who's exciting to watch. Every, he ticks every box except he's five foot in the fag butt. And, you know, and the other one's a giant. You know, that's he's not even a giant. He's just he's just mad like he's wide as he is tall. But I mean, th- that's that's the cr- that's the freak that's the crazy spot. So if you can do if you can go one two left hook, and you have a bit of intelligence, then you're a world class heavyweight. But then you've got to factor in the power. Can you take a punch? So you no matter how good you are, if someone hits you, and I think that and that's with our uh, other weight divisions, we can get away with stuff. Well, look look at me. I won the world title. I couldn't punch. If I'm a heavyweight, I don't win nothing. However good I am, ultimately, if I can't punch, they're walking through me. And I mean, that it gets, I mean, arguably, I get to light middle super welter or, or middleweight, and that's the case as well. So, you know, we, we get we, we, we get substituted with other stuff as well where we can get away with stuff that they, that they couldn't. But ultimately, the skill level doesn't have to be as good. And that's why people could come into the sport of that division and do what Ungana did because of that, with just the sheer power and strength and... and and, and that alone, but added with this clear athleticism, and and I thought intelligence against Fury. Yeah, that, yeah, same, same. I think he, he showed an awful lot in that fight that I didn't expect to see from him. Um, Andy, going to come to you. Thank We've God. spoken about it. Um, you can take a break now, bro. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Andy, going to come to you. Long, that was even long for me, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He said beforehand he wanted to do the Barry Jones podcast, and now it is. Uh, but anyway, it's, Andy, it's I can read the Barry Jones podcast anyway, isn't it? But <laughs> Thanks Andy. for my words. <laughs> um, yeah, so going to come to you. We've spoke about it seemingly every three months, well, every three months last year and sort of once a year before that. Do we need to see the old Anthony Joshua in this fight or do we need to see a new version of Anthony Joshua in this fight? Do we need to see Joshua go go at Francis Ngannou or do we need to see Joshua being a little bit more thoughtful and which one do you think we'll see? I think we need to see the one we saw before Christmas. Well, what was good about him before Christmas was that he had his own plan and he looked to execute that plan and he didn't worry about what Otto Wallin was, was doing or was going to do or tried to do. That's he it. just stepped into the middle of the ring and just used those really good basics that the Barry was talking about there and, and he believed in them and he trusted them and he wasn't worried about what was coming back because you can't be a heavyweight because if you are you won't commit yourself and if you don't commit yourself then you're in trouble or at least you can be and as Barry was saying somebody like Fury when he's good he's amazing but because of the way he boxes if he's slightly off it quite a lot of people could probably beat him He's one of those kinds of fighters. And he was slightly off it against Ngannou. Um, and Ngannou very nearly beat him. A good Joshua, a Joshua who's sharp and on point, and as I say, commits and, and, and believes in the, in the method, who's got clarity uh, and the kind of confidence that comes with that clarity. He's a very difficult ask for someone like Ngannou because, okay, you will look at him and feel like you know what he's going to do. But if he does it well, there won't be all that much you can do about it. That's that's the kind of the massive difference between somebody like Joshua and Fury. Where Joshua can obviously fall down is that if all of a sudden you stop believing in that technique that's got you so far, which is what happened with him for a while, then you've got a massive problem. Because then your head gets full of other ideas and you think, I need to change this, I need to change that because Andy Ruiz beat me. I need to do this against Usyk because he's that. And then you're all over the place then and you desert the thing that has got you so far but if you believe in it again and I think he does now then for someone who's had one professional fight he can make it very very difficult for Ngarni to the point where he can make it basically impossible for him if if he boxes well and he's sharp from the beginning but there's some ifs in there there's some ifs and and Ngarni I really enjoyed being around him um, last time we saw him. I know you did as well. He's, he's just one of these guys who 
you warm to because he's got this in really incredible story. Yeah, there's, 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 some, there's some big stories in boxing, but he's got a really <laughs> incredible story. And the way he talks about it is so kind of matter of fact. You know, it's not, he's not trying to make it into a film. It's just, this is how it was for me. And it's, if you can get through that, then you could get through anything. Because as he says himself, he chose to leave Cameroon to try and make his way to Europe. He knew that he could well die in the process. There was a very good chance that would happen. But that risk for him was worth it. That was like me, coming, that was like me leaving Wales. <laughs> so he's been happy to take that gamble once already before he even started, before he even started in any kind of ring. And boxing was always the original thing for him. It turned into MMA when he got to Europe, but boxing was always the the, the original thing. And it's the mentality with him that is, that is so strong. And it was no surprise that the thing he said in London at the press conference was, I hear Joshua has got no chin. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to make sure that I find out. He just hits that one note he needs to hit with him straight away to put that doubt into his mind or to try and put that doubt into his mind. And he will explore that. There's absolutely no question about that. Um, and it's just whether it's just whether he can get any joy doing that or not. If he can't, then then I don't see... I don't see how he can beat him. But as we've seen before, you know, it doesn't take an awful lot for any fighter for a bit of doubt to creep in, particularly if something if something happens early on. And, Barry, and sorry, I've got to say that's and that's where Josh has got to keep him busy. So he doesn't have a chance to explore that. Keep keep him occupied with what you're doing. What you said about Joshua was perfect. Worry, he went to lots of fights after that with his fight, worrying about other people. Sorry, my stomach's making an awful that's can you hear me rumbling? If you don't feed us, do you? And then <laughs> I seen George go through a podcast all by there where they had like plates of food and everything. But um <laughs> <laughs> But you could you could um no he was worried about what he, he was what he was overthinking what they were gonna do and then not doing anything himself. I am I understand that. I mean I made a career doing that. But I mean at that division it took it took away all the strength doing that. I think you know, with with I think with Ben Davison and his team, I think they've taken the burden of of thinking, overthinking stuff off him. They think they let me let us do the thinking. You just and, and you just stick to the plan. Let's keep it simple, simple, simple. And I think well, you summed it up perfectly there. I think that's what it is with him. I just think he has to just. This is what I do. Just, yeah, just he has to have that clarity. Yeah, I, I think like any 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 athlete in any sport has to have that, but especially boxing because mm. you can't. You know, you have to be. You have to be clear in your mind at what it is you're trying to achieve and how it is you're going to try and do it. And then if it doesn't, and just trust it. You know that if you if you try and execute it the way that you've planned, that it will work. It doesn't mean it has to work in the first ten seconds, but that it will that it will work. If you go in there not really sure, and you've got too many ideas in your own head and a few too many people saying a few too many things in the corner, then you've got no chance. But he was like that. Well, he was thoughtful against Wallen. He wasn't just yeah. he didn't just go bam 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 bam. He was in and out with his feet. He was good. I think he he was aware of what could happen. But still focused on what he was trying to do. So everything, every movement he made was for him to be more assertive, not aggressive. Assertive, I think is a better word for it. So he even no, so he was stepping back, trying to make him miss. He was working behind the jab. He never goes, he never went in without throwing the jab, and until he knew he had him on the on the rails. So I think, and that was the old Joshua. It was a, oh, it yeah. was a, it was a wrecking ball, but it was all intelligence. It was all going back. That I, I watched the Ruiz fight recently. The first I did do a bit for the zone. It was going so well me. until he got clipped, wasn't it? And even after that, he didn't do too bad. And you know, he did. He didn't panic. Even you could see the panic in him. Actually, you could see the panic. But I mean, he wasn't. He didn't shit himself. He just got. He he he, he, he got what well, happened. He stayed in there. He kept getting up. Yeah. yeah. Few, yeah but you know yeah. what I mean. But he, he tried to hold on to the beginning to get his legs steady. Yeah. He did all the sort of right things. Mm. But he had just a guy there who boxed all his life. Who was a real, you know, a real season guy? Even though he, like, he probably had the same amount of fights, a real season guy because of the amateur pedigree he had. Even though I know Joshua won the Olympics, but he had a longer yeah, yeah. He, but a boxing's all he's known. Ruiz, and being a smaller guy, sometimes in that situation, you can get inside the guard. And once the guy, sl when you slow the guy down to a little bit of a, you know, a, a reactive state, then with the faster hands, the faster feet, and coming up a bit from a, from a, a coming down low and coming up. Like that, it's always going to be hard for Joshua. Then, really is. But he hurt, he hurt Ruiz. He went to throw another hook, and he got caught at the same time. 
The reason all, all Ruiz did, one of the fighters didn't do it to that point, is they he threw when Joshua threw. That's all he did. He gambled. He might have got knocked out actually. Ruiz, if 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 his if his punch is just a little bit too long, and he catches it, and it, or a little bit lower, and it catches Joshua here and not here. I think Joshua takes it. Yeah, I don't think the problem with Joshua's I've always chin. said that. I've always, I've always said that. It's not. It I'm wasn't a lucky. No, because I've just said yeah, it. It wasn't, wasn't a lucky said. punch. <laughs> There's no such thing as a lucky punch because that's literally what no, they're in there be, trying to do. But it's fractions. I mean, you don't th- in, in in that situation like that. You don't. Uh, any fight who tells you different is full of shit, right? No one's that good. I mean, you might pick for a spot when you have time, but in that sort of situation when you're in, when both throwing. You just you see a hedge you aim for this. Yeah, of course. But yeah. what I'm saying is you can't. No, that's what I mean. I agree. You, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's but, but so where it's, the hit, if it hits there or there, yeah, you, it's, 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 it's luck, it, isn't it? it it's, to an extent. It's, yeah, exactly. There's a lot more luck in, in top level sport than people like to think. Because but you, but you make your own luck by throwing yeah. the shot, isn't it? That's yeah, the, that's exactly, the thing, yeah. exactly. But it's really really fine margins. And if it had hit him a bit low or it gone a bit higher and just sailed over the top of his head, then you know all sorts of things could be different. But in that fight as well, you know, he's 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 properly concussed for the first time and having to box on. I don't know. Um, I mean, he did get stopped in the amateurs. Um, stopped standing by me, high but stopped yeah. standing by me, high Nistor. So this is the first time that he's finds himself in the middle of a boxing ring. Another short heavyweight, ironically. Yeah, yeah. In, in, <laughs> in in an absolute bear pit in Madison Square Garden, and he's concussed. And you have to try and deal with that. And I can imagine. Well, I'm told that, and I believe people who tell me that trying to deal with that the first time it's happened to you is really, really hard. Really hard. Yeah. And he kept getting up and he kept getting up. And, you know, when he said in the corner to Rob McCracken, you know, why am I feeling like this? And people kind of pounced on that. It's because he's concussed. Yeah. In other sports, you're not allowed to continue when you're concussed. In boxing, it is required of you. But it doesn't make it an easy thing to do. You're, you're cast aside if you don't continue yeah. Yeah. In, in boxing, um, which, is, which is very, very different. The, the Mike Tyson quote always makes me laugh about it. He did like one of the look backs when he says, um, he says, uh, he's asking that, and I'm not going to do the voice. And he says, he's, he's asking that, he's like, his mind's okay, his body's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a great way yeah, of like, yeah, But those tempo shots do it, don't they? Yeah, They're yeah, the worst yeah. ones because you just, I've never had one, luckily, but I mean, I've just been whacked on the chin. But I mean, but then, then when, like, you, know, you see him, you can see the people going like, what, like they're looking, going, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's happened? Like, yeah. Well, they, they, t- t- Tyson himself, you know, when, when he when he got knocked down by Buster Douglas and he's on his knees looking for his gun shield and he gets back to his feet on what, 10 and a half or whatever, walks back to his corner. It's in his book and, um, and, and he says to the corner, what happened? And they say to him, you got counted out, champ. Mm. Do you see that? that There's a great thing on YouTube, Marlon Stalin, he boxed a fellow, I think it was, Ven- v- Venezuela, or something like I don't know. That's his name. I'm only a commentator. How could I say his name? But he, um, but he, he gets knocked out. Actually, it was, it was disqualification in the end, I think, or, or a no contest. But in the interview him after the fight, even though he'd been knocked out, yeah. And he was arguing with the comment. He was arguing yeah. with the with the with the, with the reporter. Going, yeah. what, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's like, a madness. This is back in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen. There was a clip last was. week that Lennox Lewis commented commented on. I don't know if it's one recently or not, but somebody gets knocked out and he comes around and then he goes to his corner and he starts checking his gloves and stretching and like like doing knees up. You know, he's kind of like walks to the middle of the ring. Right, come on, let's start. And he's just been knocked out yeah. because he can't remember. Yeah. You know, sure. it, I said with well, my brother, didn't I? He, told yeah. he was going to brush his teeth with a razor blade after he got knocked out as an it's, amateur. It's, it's yeah. terrific. It's right? crazy, oh, yeah. you know. This is all. This is all stuff I've been looking into for the, the last teeth, no? for the last few months. And there's, there's an amazing clip of Simon Brown, mid nineties. He fights yeah. a guy called Vincent Petway, and he gets properly knocked out, and he kind of falls like tombstone like onto his back. And as he's lying there, his gloves are up, and he starts jabbing. jabbing yeah. and he starts jabbing. It's mind blowing the stuff that they can do. Even though they're out, because they're conditioned, <laughs> they're conditioned. Is the top muscle, it's, it's training and muscle memory and instinct is just to somehow keep fighting, even though they've got no idea what's happening. Yeah, the there's a Tommy Morrison one where he gets knocked out by Ray Mercer, and they have him in the corner, and he's obviously he's just been stopped, and he's in the corner like slipping punches. Like, yeah. While he's, yeah, yeah, that's when he took all well, fifteen punches. Yeah, yeah that's that's one of the worst stoppages. Yeah. He's like, yeah, this one is yeah, still yeah, boom, boom, boom. really bad. Yeah. I could be wrong, and I'm sure people will tell me if I'm wrong. I think I remember Carl Froch after Groves won saying that he couldn't remember yeah, being for, knocked yeah, that, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, the, I spoke yeah, to yeah. him about this, and, and yeah, midway through the interview, he, said, he remembered that he'd been knocked down. Yeah, they said, "What happened? And when he were beat, you gone?" He was like, "I forgot about that." And when he when he beat Pascal, he, he got he got hit. He got properly nailed by Pascal. He told Wicked me, and I, think, that was. and I think round seven or round eight, and he doesn't remember anything from that point onwards until he's back in the changing room. 
So getting the belt, Carl Froch and the new, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Against Jermaine Taylor, when he got knocked down against by Taylor in the third or fourth, he doesn't remember anything from that point onwards until being on the point of winning in the 12th round. And the adrenaline surge of that happening brought him back into the room. Other yeah. than that, he doesn't remember yeah, I, anything. No, I never had that. I got knocked, well, the first time I ever got knocked down, then um, I didn't, didn't want him hurt, didn't feel it, didn't know, didn't know, it was just on my ass. That's all. I yeah. didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I. I, I went. I, no, it was my last fight when I got beat up. But I mean, I got put down with the left hook. I didn't feel it. I was with right hand. There you go. Maybe I did have. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I did feel it. <laughs> but um, it was, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it. Feel it. One hurt. Took the, the count. The, the eight, took the eight. I was and I, and I carried on. Okay, I got dropped again straight after. But I mean, that wasn't because of that. I wasn't concussed. I just it just hit me so clean. I've only been concussed once, as far as I'm aware. I mean, that I know it's concussed. It's foot playing football. Not really. I got hit with a football about this close, really hard, like a shot, hit me right in the face, and I was fine. I should everyone, Stop I, throwing jabs back. I heard everybody go, no, I took a knee straight away. <laughs> I heard everyone go, whoa, and I'm going, what are you on about? I'm all right. No, that's fucking tough, and I can't, I shit the football. And then I couldn't remember driving home. I got over, I said to my missus, oh, I can't remember driving home. I had so many yeah. stories like this last year when I was researching the book. It's just, it's... And we've gone well off topic here, I know. Football's so that, most, we've football's no chance of doing two that, episodes. That, football's the <laughs> most dangerous sport ever. Dar- Darren Barker told me a great one as well, where, you know, a lot of this happens in the gym, obviously, not just on the night, but he was sparring down at Repton um, against an African guy who was, who was over because he was preparing for the Commonwealth Games. All of a sudden, he's just sat on his backside in the ring. Um, Tony Burns tells him, get out of the ring. He says he goes, does some groundwork, does some skipping. He gets on the scales. A few minutes later, Tony Burns comes over to him. Uh, and says, who are you fighting in a couple of weeks' time? I don't know. And he did know. You know, he's Tim Bradley, actually. Where do you live? I don't know. And, you know, his body had carried on working because he carried on training. And he was being asked really basic questions. And he just didn't have the answers. My old man... You know, what, 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 I mean, it's it's incredible. My old man got knocked out in the pads once, right? The, my, my mate, my mate, Carlos Charles, his name is, right? I would have battered him, he was hard. And he punched my old man's tooth through his lip. He, he asked for the shot. Anyway, they, they got him mixed up. And he threw, he threw like a screw shot right through the middle of the, of the, of the pads. <laughs> knocked my old man, knocked my dad's back out. Knocked his tooth through his lip. So I'm thinking to the hot, I said, Dad, we're going to the hospital. He's going, what are you on about? You, you got your lips all messed up, Dad. Guess, and he did a little bit of a car crash, bad week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the, that's a really in the, terrible only little, No, not only a little prank, but he had, he had a courtesy car. He, Where's my car? This you got a courtesy car. What are you on about? He wouldn't have it. Like, he wouldn't get in the car. I was going to the hospital. Why are you going to the hospital for? You've been knocked out. Like, well, you just, come on, let's go back to the gym. He, went yeah, he was yeah. fine. He, got, he was all right. Yeah. He just couldn't have Yeah, weird. It's absolutely incredible. I never had that. I've been too tough except for playing football, which is a real rough sport, <laughs> by the way. No wonder they're all jumping on the floor crying. And I can understand why, no? You don't play football. Um, but anyway, uh, right, we're going to go back to the fight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Barry, going to come to you. Trying uh, to sell his book. What's your book called? The Knockout. It's called The Knockout. <laughs> When's it out? End of May. But you can go. pre-order now. Pre-order now. He but there's ne- loads of stuff like that in there. there. Like, that's, he never, you know, he never come to me for any stories. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> he never got knocked out. <laughs> I never knocked anyone. Right, anyway, Barry, going to come to you. We always talk about, every time we, we kind of preview a big fight, I always ask you the same question about what a fighter has to do. Show somebody something early. Obviously, you've mentioned Nganu. Go over, try and jump on Joshua, try and cause yeah. panic. Similar sort of questions are asked, Andy, really. What version of... Like, how does Joshua... How does he go about being safe? Is it, does he have to be offensive to be safe yes. in this instance? Yeah, it's exactly what he has to be. Like he always was. You know, like I said, like I've been saying, he has to make Nganu be the one reacting, thinking about, th- make Nganu think what you're doing rather than you have to think about what he's doing. So if he goes in too thoughtful, he goes in, in my known Nganu can punch. That's all he really knows. What else can you know about him? You have no, what have you got to look at? You got those wrong. You got a lot of wrongs with Fury there, but what are you really seeing? I, you know, you can have a look, but I mean, ultimately, you got got a guy here who's going to come, who's going to be out right at me with low hands, by the way. They're not high like this, mm. so you got a target to hit, but he got a long reach and he, and he steps in and out with his feet quite well and Ganu, so he's going to have reach on his jab. So you gotta get you gotta get your timing right with your movement to your feet. That foot, stepping in up with that front foot that Josh is gonna be oh I've been saying that for a long time anyway, that's important for him, but for this fight very important. If you can if you can land with a powerful jab and be patient with that, you haven't got to go bam 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 like a lunatic, just bam. Every time I'm going to moves, bam, bam. You've got to be strong and confident enough to hold your ground with him as well. 
You can in and out with your feet and maybe take a little adjustment to the left and right, but don't go down to you go down to Nagano, he's just gonna steal your space, you're gonna fill him full of confidence, and then you become the reactive fighter, and then you're in a fight. And then <laughs> we still don't know where this confidence is. If he starts off on a positive note, you gain confidence from the results you get in while you're fighting. You can build it up, the momentum thing that everyone talks about. And that's what it is for him. So you gotta be the jab is I've been saying this since Louis' first fight, the jab is his weapon. Everything works behind it if he steps in and believes in it. If that jab's powerful and fast and comes back, all his punches come back high, for, for Joshua, naturally. Because his elbows, could he punches inside his body frame, like you should. This is a lovely chair to practice. His body frame, <laughs> like you should. <laughs> <laughs> no, then his elbows don't flay. He doesn't, he d you know, he, he doesn't really come too many um, extravagant with his work. All his work's quite neat, isn't it? Yeah. One, two left hooks, right uppercuts. That's pretty much what he does. So that's fine for him. That's all he needs against some guy who got good structure with his work. And hopefully the punches come over the top because you can block them. Like that, your hands are high anyway. You turn and take the most of it there. But you've got to make sure those hands are high. See, your hands really should be around your, around your chin because you want to be punching more from your shoulder, It really. But for someone like him, the higher the better for me. It, it'll, I mean, as long as you're in and out and, you've got, and you're aware of your surroundings, you don't want to be covered too much here. But you want to be here because you want to be blocking those temple shots. Because if Angano swings one over the top and I hit you slightly on top of the head, you might go all wobbly legs and, and then all, all that shit floods back. But I think if he steps in up with that front foot and he's solid with the jab, I think that's his key to victory. That 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 alone. Everything else will work off that. He punches down the line, Joshua. He punches neat. And this is why I, was, this is why I always thought in those early days he would beat Wilder because his work was before Ruiz, the, before the Ruiz fight, because his work was neater. And you know, jo uh, you know, Wilder was the more concussive puncher. He would get there first, and that would be, and he would get uh, while Wilder was throwing. No, and Garner doesn't quite swing like that. Though he fucking might. Who knows what he does? Mm. But I mean, he didn't show. He showed more conformity in his work, if that's a word. But he's still, he's the elbow's still going to come up. He's going to try because he hasn't got that target to hit. Like Fury, give him a big, that big rectangle in the middle of, between your gloves. He gave him that target to hit. Joshua's going to be like this. So he's going to try look for the target. So he's going to be trying to do these shots and these shots, I think. And you want him to do that because then if you, every time he goes like that, you go bam. Every time he goes like that with, and tries to throw that long left hook because he's long and he'll step in with it, you go bam and step in. That's, that's, your, that's your movement. But you start first, make him react, and then that gives you the space to throw the combination. So you got jab, you got hit with a jab like that. Bam. Make, <laughs> so he fires back. And when you get hurt with a shot, because his neck is this big, so I don't think you're going to really hurt him for a while. I think you, I think the way to stop on Ganu, if that's possible, is the fatigue thing. Mm -hmm. Keep hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, and making him, making him panic, making him rush his work, making him miss. He's still a massive lump and he's full of muscle, so that oxygen is going to be, you know, fill, fill it really quickly. They're going to expel really quickly. Then theoretically, after five rounds, he'll be spent. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but I think that's it. But Josh, as long as you just say he's not relaxed and does that, but that jab's got to be the weapon. If that jab's not solid and fast and hard, and because his hands are here, everything comes back from where your hands start from. Usually, if your hands are low, they never come back high after you throw a punch. If you start high, there's a good chance they're going to come back high. If you throw from your hip, it's never going to come high. It's almost impossible. You know, you got to have real fast reactions that go like this. So that's the, no, he doesn't fight that way. So if he just believes in himself, it's, it's all about how he believes. But he has to be, com he has to commit. But with that commitment, you are you are going to be in the line of fire. So there's always a risk with that. But if he starts to want to dance and move around, then he's, it's going to be a really hard, difficult night for him. Because what Ungana has shown is he, he's patient, he's thoughtful with his work. And because he knows he carries power, he'll hit you on the arm or something, you'll feel it. He doesn't give a shit. Like he knows, he knows what he got. He, he, kn he doesn't know how good he is as a boxer yet. But I think he knows what his attributes are. And he has that crazy long reach. For, no, for the guy, you know, he's, he's an 83 inch reach. He's, he's, he's mm. only six foot four. Mm. <laughs> he's a midget. 270 <laughs> pounds. Oh, well, well his shoulders are 82 <laughs> he's inches. He's a anyway, massive, massive bloke. Massive, isn't he? Right, so the first time, because obviously you guys had seen him from here. The first time I saw him was at the announcement press conference yeah. to, for the Joshua thing. And I only noticed him by the fact that all of the lights started to get blacked out by the fact that he'd stood in front of him. I was thinking, fuck look at the size I mean, of this that's man. The interesting he thing is an enormous, yeah. enormous yeah, he, specimen. I think he was 272, wasn't he? They both kind of weighed in with their, well, they both weighed in with their, it was a ceremonial way and they weighed in with their clothes on. But um, yeah, I think he was 272 and Fury was 277 and their body shapes were very different. Yeah. So Joshua will probably be about 250. That, that's where he is these days. And yeah. Agana will be the same. So he's, you know, he's giving away a stone and a half. You know, that's not, 
that's no small thing but he is an absolutely phenomenal physical specimen of Gardner he really is and Barry, I, th when this I think I think he'd be mean as well because I know at the weigh-in with Fury, he was all lovely and smiling when he at that weigh-in. He didn't lose his temper, but you can see him thinking. Well, Fury tried to put Fury it on tried him to a get bit, on yeah. him, and then he did that. Poof, we did four million views from that anyway. Yeah, yeah. he just tried to <laughs> bosh him out. Sorry, yeah, yeah, no, and it, was... you could just see Fury go. Oh, hang on, like because yeah. we've seen Fury do it in the past. I mean, Tom Schwartz, where he was like jokey, jokey, and then at the yeah. the weigh-in, he started getting in Schwartz's face. You can see Schwartz going. Oh, What's he doing? Yeah. He was nice to me the other day. And Garner was just sort of like, get off me, mate. Now we're going to fight and you're yeah. going to find out. Yeah. Uh, Barry, yourself. when this fight gets in on the inside, because one of the most, there was to me, there was three telling moments in the first, in the Fury and Garner fight. When Fury hit and Garner and he didn't go anywhere and didn't panic. When Ngannou hit Fury and you see the look on Fury's face going, oh my God. But I think one of the most, maybe not most surprising things, but one of the most telling things was when the fight got on, on the inside and I'd sort of likened it, and I think we spoke about it on the pod where Fury always had that ace in the hole of being able to lean on you and yeah. wrap you up and it became very apparent very quickly that he couldn't do that with Ngannou and Ngannou was very much the dominant man on the inside physically well, you can't. what happens when that happens oh, can you, get your arms you can't get your arms wrong you can't get your arms wrong with him, like. because Joshua is not so I mean people talk about Joshua versus Usyk oh yeah well Joshua doesn't know how to use his weight and doesn't know how to bully and blah blah I'm not suggesting that he tries to yeah. bully Ngannou but he's not known Joshua as somebody with a great inside game I know he's got a good right uppercut yeah. and uh, but yeah, that's mid-range yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, like when it's up close yeah. I don't think I can't really remember any fighters really putting it on him like that well I think it's what, what you do when you get close like that you get close as you possibly can and that's all you haven't got to be a great inside fighter to be able to, to survive inside so you just all you got to do is stop him from working now you don't you, you're not going to tie and Ganu up but you just get chest to chest you can hold him. You can get. You can get your arms inside. It's not. I, I know he's. He's going to be a master, but he's not grappling you. He's not. He's not. No. He, he can't do all the things he could do in his discipline because he get disqualified. You break your arm, money. And so you know, you just get close. You get chest to chest. Stop him from working, just in case. If you're. If you're. If you don't feel, feel confident there, but he. He shouldn't get close. That's what I'm saying. If you know. If if you keep your shape and the jab's working for you, he's never getting close unless he rushes you. And if he rushes you. Then he's gonna come from a, if he's rushing you, he's gonna come from a, he's gonna come too low, and you just go on top of him like that. He might lift you up and throw you, but that doesn't matter because the referee's gonna break it up. And then you, so that's what you want. You want every time he gets close, you want the referee to break you up, so you put you back to over here where you want to be in your distance. You don't want to be that close. No, I don't know if I don't know if Ungano can throw punches inside with effect. That well, really, we still we still well, we still yeah. don't really know. But he, yeah, you don't want to be. I mean, for, for what his background and discipline is, you think you don't want to be him. He might be able to move you in a way that he can get that foot around the outside naturally, because they do that to take you down, don't they? His foot on the outside, just enough to make the space for the shot. You don't want to risk risk messing around with things like that. You don't. You think, God, oh, I know what the fight inside or whatever. No, he doesn't. Or the uppercut's a good shot for me, but the uppercut's a good shot for him after he's thrown other punches. Mm. And, and he's three quarter range he's never that close when he throws it because he needs the distance to throw it I wouldn't throw any uppercuts I mean everything would be straight for me for a while I mean for a long I mean for rounds I'd just be throwing straight shots boom 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 like that jab double jab one two one two one two one two one two like that for ages in and out like this just slowly breaking him down making him miss making him pay in and out always a presence in front of him just just to make him <laughs> get his breathing like that tired him out so he's a massive limb full of muscle so you know the more you panic as Josh has found out when he panics because his, his tank went like that because you don't breathe him right and you carry all of a sudden you just carry all that muscle is such an advantage until you until it's not an advantage and you just carry him around too much weight to survive do you know what I mean little fellas like me we can run round I've done it in fights I've got dropped in, I got not dropped I got hurt in the 11th round of a title fight once and there was no wind left in me and because I had good legs and like and, and only only nine stone four to run round with. Do you know what I mean? It was easy. I could I survived the round and won the fight. But you know, but like they can't do that because they're too big. Once they tire, they fuck. They they got nowhere to go. They got to hold their ground. And if that's what you've seen in, in Ruiz. In the end, in the end, he just he was just exhausted. I couldn't go in. He couldn't move anymore. So you do, yeah. So you just want to be. I think you want to try and get the gander to do that. So I wouldn't I wouldn't play inside. If you go inside, just get chest to chest. Get get your get your arms inside if you can straight away. Get chest to chest. Let free let the referee break you up. Just let him break you up and let him warn you. But you don't hold him. Just get your arms inside. Go chest to chest. Put your put your head on his side of his head like that. Make him feel it as well. I would say that. Make him feel it. So he loses his temper and he throws you. Let him throw you. And if he throws you, go. 
by the way if he throws you you go with it make it obvious mm. so he can't do it again the referee tells him off that's you should do like I, every, every time he tries to use any of his um, advantages of, of strength or technique in that, in that sort of close quarters that are not really allowed which he would do and should do it if he gets a chat opportunity you overreact to it you do like Usyk did when he didn't when he got hit on the on the belt line against them um, do well <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean but you do that you just overreact to everything and just so he takes take away his strength yeah he, he wants he, Joshua wants this as clean as he can possibly make it and almost, luckily he's almost, a clean fighter by the yeah, way so almost, that's just yeah, super, exactly yeah. just all it's almost like it's, it's not a perfect analogy but like a 10 10 rounds of elite international amateur boxing try and keep it like that how we used to do that and that's all off the jab, right hand. Maybe the odd left hook if he's feeling really expansive. Mm. But he probably won't need it. If he throws those other two punches right, he doesn't even really need it. And he doesn't have to stop him either. You know, he just needs to win. Yeah. Um, but Garnu's always... He's always got that chance with these big, heavy hands that that he will catch you with something. But you can't... Easy for me to say, but you can't... You can't go through the rest of your career worrying about somebody landing an Andy Ruiz style left hook that hits you high on the head and scrambles you. You just, you just can't. Yeah, it could happen again. Same anything can happen shot in there. Drop Fury. Yeah, anything can happen in there. But you can't, you but can't, you can't be fearful of that for yeah. the rest of your life because otherwise you may as well not box. Otherwise you may as well not box. But the difference is with Fury. When Fury threw the right hand, he fo- he throws it sort of half squares his feet it's a good shot by Ngannou because he didn't he, he took the shot swallowed it it didn't affect him and threw the left hook but he, I, if I remember I haven't really watched he came it close game. like 10-15 seconds before Ngannou yeah, but, but, he, but he comes back with his fury doesn't he mm. so he thinks he's out of distance again that, you don't get no if, if, if he's on point maybe or you know, I think he's got to take he, he was, if he wasn't on point it's his own fucking fault by yeah. the way yeah. you have to take <laughs> him for what he was that, yeah. you have to take him for what yeah, he was never, on the never mind yeah exactly, it's just, it's just, exactly. That's, it, that's his business if he's not like, you've got to be the best you can be every time fights and mm. that's, that's what it should be and if you're not then you're not you're not then, then, then well I only lost my last fight because I, I won as good as I should have been you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we go yeah, yeah part of the job is not just on the night part of the job is to prepare as best as you possibly yeah, can yeah you never know if Ngannou could have been injury or you never know so what I mean is but, he, but he pulled, he's pulled back and he's sort of like he's half leaning back when he just takes a shot anyway and it didn't look like a massive a massive heavy shot it's a good shot but one massively heavy just shows the power that he's got as, as I said that, that Dan Hardy was saying touch you with the fingers and knock you out that's a worry so Joshua I think you're, I mean you're better off you don't want to be on that on the end of that you're better off staying where you are but he's always like this though isn't he Joshua he's always high almost yeah. always even when he throws the left hook he's high that's why he was unlucky against um, Ruiz because he's, he's sort of like this when he throws a hook quite often he's mm. always usually quite neat but for some reason maybe he just went like that a little bit I don't I can't quite remember it yeah, fractions isn't it yeah. absolute yeah. fractions if Francis Ngannou wins he's the where, of all where does that put, put him Andy in the I guess the heavyweight landscape in the boxing landscape in the sporting landscape well I, I would say if he wins then you would probably have to say that he is the greatest combat sport athlete of all time the ultimate fighting machine <laughs> I, 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 I'm, not dis- I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you it's just I yeah. the, but I, I've never tried UFC I just, that's no, a good point I just I don't see get it. Barry in the, in the UFC Dana if you're watching who do you want to fight but you would have to you'd, you'd have to put him up who's there the, wouldn't who, you who's Dana <laughs> who's she, who's she? <laughs> you, that, that's the way you would have to place him you, you would have to say that this man is the ultimate fighting machine the finest fighting human on the planet. You would have to say that, Barry. Yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe. I mean, you, you, you will say that because we can, we can all sit here going like the heavy division is our flagship division, and then, and then a guy comes comes from another discipline, batters everyone, and we go, yeah, but if he was a middleweight, he wouldn't have done that <laughs> against Ken. No, which is, you know, which is, which I think is true. We would, that wouldn't happen because the, the technique is yeah. it, would, would over, oversee most of the stuff. But you have to say, you know, and he might already be at the, what, just what he did against Fury, even in defeat, makes him the greatest novice of all time. Yeah, the it greatest, does. Yeah. One, the greatest debut I've ever seen in boxing history. That that, that is that, because the because what he did, he almost won. He's arguably that already. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. I, I think he probably. I think, I, I think you'd have to and, give him that title already. Yeah, and he might be one of these just great athletes. Like I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll, I know he was their world champion on the UFC, yeah. their UFC He's champion, the lineal champion. But 
It's going to be going for 30 years, I mean. Anyway, whatever. Uh, he was there. He was their champion, but I don't know how he's revered compared to their other past champions. I don't know if he's regarded as their all-time greatest UFC fight of all it's time. It's such a young sport, isn't it? That yeah. you, you you get that every three or four years or so, don't you? The greatest but, of. You know, so but but either way, like he, he's obviously one of their best. He's yeah, yeah, been. yeah. So. Yeah. Or is he? I don't know. Maybe they might be going. Hang on, he's like not top twenty of our no, best. No, he is. Which he's means what, he's what he's in the conversation. I'm not a by. I'm not an MMA. Expert, but but what I mean is, so that, so he's obviously a, a, a phenomenal athlete. Yeah. But to go to another discipline like that, and have the confidence. Listen, ten million of where he got paid can give you confidence in anything. By the yeah. way, but but I mean, still not to do it. It's got the money, but to have confidence to actually go and perform that way and not panic. And he didn't panic. And bear in mind. It's a massive stage. The whole and the whole build up to what to to, to it and the ring. No, it, it took him like forty five minutes to get in the ring. I mean, all that is the is that can mess you up. That can I don't know UFC. Do they do that like boxing? Not like that. I mean, no one does anything no, like that no. at all, regardless of it's boxing or UFC. That to me was the most impressive <laughs> thing about his fight with Tyson Fury is that he didn't panic. Fury went out there in the. I, I remember. Where, um, not comparing the fights. Ali, when Ali boxed Foreman, he came out in the first round and he threw like 10 lead right hands. Just right hand, right yeah. hand, right hand. And Fury boxed the same way against Ngano. Like, big monster, I'm going to go, I'm going to land the right hand, make you feel it. And you could see the look on Fury's face after he hit him with one right hand. And he did hit him clean in that first mm. round. He didn't like, he wasn't, he hit him clean a few times. You can see the look on Fury's face going, didn't sorry, go anywhere sorry, there. Sorry, my phone, right, my, someone's messaging me on my phone. I thought you were just getting really excited. No, but it's, it's, no, it's, not, it's touching my, my body. Okay, and anyway. it's, like, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, can you ring me? So the, 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 the <laughs> my phone's over there, or I would, obviously. Can you text me? Any, if anyone got my number watching, send me a text. Is this live? But anyway, the fact that he didn't panic was, to me, the most impressive part of all yeah. of that. I think we all yeah. anticipated, like, okay, he'll like. And it's another. We mentioned about the stamina and him, the, him there, there, gassing out. There like, is, there is no panic in no, this man. And like, like, mentally, he is yeah. absolutely. He is. He is rock, rock solid. solid. Yeah, rock yeah. solid. And Joshua talked about it at the press conference. He said. You know, what I'm taking on here in, in someone like Agarno is his mind. And his mind is incredibly strong. And I listened to a pod with him um, on it, Agarno, the, the High Performance Podcast. And, you know, he takes you through the the backstory, basically. He started working in the sand mines when he was nine. So that's where that physique started to get built up. And, and it just takes you through the whole thing, basically. And there is no fear for him in getting into the ring. As I said, he gambled with his life already. To, to to leave Cameroon to come to Europe. So he'd already crossed that bridge years and years and years ago that he's happy to roll that dice to literally fight for his own survival. So getting into any kind of a ring or octagon where the referee are rules, it just isn't really a thing for him. Mm. So there's no way he's going to freeze or panic under any circumstances. And Joshua knows it. So he knows to keep this guy under control, he's got to be laser focused and disciplined and just stick to the job and stick to the task because he is not going to expect at any point that Ngannou will get in any way demoralised or disheartened. He will just keep coming and coming and coming. Even before the before the Fury fight, I was one of the people who thought when Fury lands a clean shot, it'd be different. It's not like getting hit by an MMA guy. Similar stuff that you were yeah. just saying there. At, but at the very least, I expected like Fury would box his head in for a round, round and a half, and then he'd start to get wild or he'd start to chant it. And he never did. Don't be wrong, Fury didn't do that. He never lost his shape once, but did he? No, exactly. And that was, uh, and it's sort of going into the ring and, and dealing with the situation and, and the stage that you're on. I completely agree and accept that. But in, I mean, obviously, you all know more about this than fucking me. But in the heat of battle, just, I don't know. Taking, a, taking a right hand in the heat of battle and not. I mean, he's obviously drilled that left hook to throw it after the right hand, but thinking, okay, yeah, that one landed, but no, going to work, going to get the next, yeah, that one landed. And the presence of mind to just stay there, be present, and work the fight out as it's going on. I just never, ever expected I, that. I thought there'd be punches that were landed he didn't see, and that's that's the panic when mm. you don't see it. or you do, And that's what usually... And then you can get knocked out. Yeah, yeah course, As we yeah. discussed, anyone can get knocked out. And then out. you worry, and, then, or then, and, if, and if you're an aggressively-minded fighter anyway... Then you get hurt, and if you, if you had a bit of a lunatic and you go, oh, this, I I imagine I wasn't like that, but then you go and you go for yeah, it, yeah, and yeah. that's when you get caught. Then really get caught, but nothing that land. Even when he got caught, there was nothing that ex nothing. There was no surprise shot from Fury, really, really. I mean, I haven't watched it back actually since I only watched it once live. I didn't want to watch it again. It's ironic though that now I always said the reputation of the sport, you no, know, really lied on Fury getting the win. <laughs> Wish I would never said that. Now. But um. <laughs> And it's sort of the same here, mind. 
not the reputation of this boy, because you know, we, we, we all make out that and Gannon and always has always been a boxer, really, because he started off boxing. But you know, that's like you know, we, you've all punched the pads, haven't you? It don't make you boxers, do it? You know, you take people on the pads quite regular. You know what I mean? So you know, knowing about the sport and doing it, it don't mean you're going to be a, a good at it. But like, it's like you would never if you're going to if you're going to give someone the baton for the reputation of the sport in that division, it was always going to be Fury, I think, or Usyk, but definitely yeah. Fury. A Fury, the bigger guy. You wouldn't give it to Joshua, but now Joshua's got it. You mentioned earlier that you didn't, uh, uh, I don't know whether you necessarily meant for this fight, but obviously in the past where there has been a lot of pressure on Joshua, I think there's a lot of pressure on him here. Like, Oh, there do, is, there's yeah. Got there's got to be a lot of pressure, pressure on him here. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly against a guy who, look, yeah. you know but, this guy can but, punch. But, but if he gets knocked out, it's a bad look for him. If losing is a bad look for him. But because, because of... Gets, if he gets buzzed, if you know, I think this has got to be as the thing, well. The like thing is, though, but the thing is, though, for because cousin Warren Gano did the Fury with Fury, not to him. What he because he, he dropped Fury and, 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 and made Fury just get over the line. Or, so a lot of people thought Gano won, but he didn't fucking never, right? Then that oh, that that helps Joshua because he'll go well. Fury's meant to be the best, you know, the best of our generation. Look what he did to him. Do you know what I mean? So I think he can take, he can, he can spin it another way and continue his career somehow. I know exactly what you mean, but I think this has come at the absolutely perfect time for him because he's been asked, he's been questioned so much and, and it's been justifiable that he's been questioned in the way that he has been because the performances weren't there and we could all see or we felt we could see what the problem was, which was that you know seeming unwillingness to really commit in the way that he, that he used to. And we all saw what happened during fight week before Christmas. You know, he was tetchy, which which I kind of thought was a good sign, to be honest. Yeah. Whereas Wilder was all kind of like peace and love. But going into that fight week, and just putting that to one side, that's not really relevant. But going into that fight week, everyone was questioning Joshua. Everybody was saying, well, Wilder's still the Wilder of old because of the third fight against Fury and the fact that he chinned Hellenius. Well, Joshua chinned Hellenius too, mm. but, but Wilder chinned him better. So, you know, that's where we were. But then by the end of their, the end of their fights, all of a sudden it's Joshua who's got his mojo back and maybe Wilder has lost his. And that came a couple of months after we saw Fury struggle against Ngannou. So he's kind of on the charge. He's coming up, the ra up on the rail mm -hmm. again here, Joshua, potentially. And I think he'll be, he'll be loving the idea that he's kind of got his baton in the hand for boxing here. And yeah. he can go in against Ngannou put in a really good performance this is how he's got to be thinking about it and say to everybody listen you're all talking about Fury Usyk and that's fine we'll see what happens in that but whoever wins that fight they need to come and see me because I'm the one who's done the better job against this guy and I'm back you know I think he'll be bang up for that for that responsibility isn't it funny though like, because remember Joshua was like he was like the, the hero of boxing and Fury was like the devil mm. and then you know what happened then it was Fury, what happened to you know, the mental health and, the, and, the, and, the, and after be Klitschko and all the come off the rails with the drugs and everything else, and then all of a sudden he comes back, you know, boxes Wilder way before he should have, you know, spins that spins that great story about you know he come back from you know, thoughts of suicide and and and, and, and put advocate for mental health all that stuff, and and he became the hero, but we can't have two heroes in boxing, mm. so Joshua all of him become the devil. That's and the game and that must have been great for like, all of a sudden, he was like literally like you know like well I'm like the poster boy for boxing here especially certainly British boxing and now everyone hates me and everyone loves this guy here who was literally calling pe calling people all sorts of things from homophobic to everything else mm. back, back in the day and now he's Drugs like, yeah no he's no yeah no he's no he's like the god of boxing all of a sudden mm. that must have been hard for him and now that might be starting to go like that again but I, I think you're right he's he's on a, he's got he's got a real good run now because that that's a a good finish against Hellenius and a really good showing against yeah. Wallin, but it is only that. Yeah, yeah. I think we yeah. still got to be a little bit, he might not be full of confidence like he once was, but there's an improvement there. So really, the Ngannou fight, a guy who's only had one fight and he's 0-1, <laughs> let's not forget that what he is, he's 0-1. Yeah. It's yeah. mad that we're having this. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I mean, should, <laughs> should be the perfect fight, if anything, you should be arguing, oh, is he fucking fighting Joshua? But then obviously, but yeah. Yeah. No, but but it's a it's well, a feasible fight. Joseph Parker yeah. beat Dante Wilder. Yeah, you know, just, that's, that's it's a to it's a totally unique situation. Yeah. And, and, and with Joshua, madness, with Joshua it? as well, you, you look at the fact that he said that he was going to get busy, and he did it. You know, he boxed three times last year. Yeah. By the time he's finished this fight against Ngannou, he'll have boxed four times quite comfortably within the twelve month twelve month period. So it should be three or four weeks within twelve months. He yeah. hasn't done that since he became a world champion because 
the fact that he hasn't had titles meant that he was it makes it easier to do it doesn't it basically but uh, and the other guy who's done the same thing is joseph parker it's not a coincidence yes. that those two are kind of performing well, surely, mm. and reaping the rewards of that. Because well, we, we, we are mackling the same thing, really. Less camps, more fights. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? That cool. activity. I mean, we saw, I, mean, I was talking about this earlier with somebody last year, we saw in some big, big fights, fights get wiped out, really, because, I mean, uh, there's other intangibles, but inactivity was certainly one of them. Errol Spence against Terence yeah. Crawford is, yeah. is one. Uh, Stephen Fulton against Nyo, in a way. Yeah. Would those fights have gone any different? Who knows? But Wilder. Wilder against Joseph Parker, but it Jamal them, Charlo it? against yep. Canelo Alvarez. You know, they, there's a lot of uh, you know, there's a lot of inactivity across those four fights. Well, there's no, there's no mistake that I lost my fight when I I had one fight in two years. Yeah, I mean, I would have lost anyway, it. and I would have lost exactly the same fucking way. But <laughs> but you never know, do no, you? No, you don't. Like, and it, it is true. Uh, we'll get the rematch soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw him the other day fighting fighting boxing. You, I saw that. Didn't he clean him out in like some some, <laughs> some bodybuilder? Because he's freighters. He's like this wide. He's but he's only my height. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't he? And he's only like five foot seven or something. And he's a little tiny fella. And he's like he's full of muscle. He's massive. But this guy was full of muscle, neck like that. And I saw him at the way, and I thought you gotta be careful, Fred. This he's gotta be about forty eight himself. Like yeah. I mean, he looks great for it, but like be careful and then the next day I seen the clip on, on Instagram and just whacking this fella bang <laughs> like, over around around. Around. <laughs> like he's 10 years younger than him like whatever and four stone heavier like oh leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> that's how you deal with it like, that's how you do it that's how you deal with those crossover fights so. <laughs> yeah, yeah it is, isn't it? Go <laughs> through, mate. Don't I worry think you should be the guy <laughs> um, I just I, I'm, I am really excited to see it and all of these things all of the the discussion points around Joshua they all come with the big caveat of yeah, what if yeah. there's an asterisk. What yeah, if what if Ngannou lands a long left hook in the first couple of rounds and Joshua goes, oh fuck, I don't, I don't like that, and then he does become tentative and he's poor. Like I'm like I'm selling the fight, but it is true. Yeah. No, that's, like, it, that's it. That's it. In a, that's it in a nutshell. Or that's Joshua, or jo the first time they get in close together, Ngannou does grab him and move him across the ring, and Joshua goes, fuck me, no one's ever done that to me before. It, Jesus, be, what's it'd this? Be, it'd be funny fight week because I'm. And, a, and by I, the way, I, sorry, both completely feasible things that could yeah, happen. I know, I know. That's the thing. Yeah. Isn't it? It's funny fight with you because I'm there with the zone, you're there with Sky, and we'll all be stood next to each other. And they'll be saying, Oh, and Gano's gonna bat it. And we're gonna go, Oh, Josh is gonna wipe the floor with him. <laughs> Fury next time, <laughs> 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 right? Okay, it is a, a stacked card in uh Riyadh, so we're gonna go through and have a look at it. We're only gonna get a chance to do one podcast today, we were gonna do two, but. But anyway, yeah, we're all good. Uh, so we're going to have a quick look down the card. Andy, going to start with you first because you've just mentioned his name, the returning Joseph Parker. Um, after a very, very fruitful 2023, which of course culminated in that win over Deontay Wilder. It's not an easy one that he's come back to. It's Big Bang Zhang for the WBO interim heavyweight title. Another really, really good fight. Really good. Uh, and Zhang was on the list of, of potential opponents for him for December the 23rd. So I think this is one of the ones that they'd had to think about previously. They had no hesitation in, in taking it. He boxed at the end of October. He was back out in December and he's back out again now. So they're on a roll, him and Andy Lee. They're, they're on a roll. And you have to... You have to love it, really, don't you? Because Zhang presents an entirely different set of problems to Deontay Wilder. He could hardly be more different, really. Um, and he's very, very dangerous. We saw what he did to, to Joe Joyce. Parker had a brilliant game plan against Deontay Wilder, and he executed it really, really well. And they were very confident all week. And you, you believed in their confidence when you spoke to them. It's... It's quite an easy thing to do, I think, after a while when you've been around fight weeks to figure out whether you believe, whether somebody really believes they're going to win or not. Yeah. It, it doesn't mean that you necessarily then believe them as well, but if they don't really believe it themselves, then they've got no chance, basically. Probably and you could tell that, that he did he did believe it. They, they both were absolutely certain that they could that they could do it. And and it was, he won pretty much every round against Deontay Wilder. And again, as is often the way people looked a lot at what Wilder didn't do, which is which is completely understandable. Um, but it was just a really, really good performance. But they'll need an altogether different game plan against Zhang, obviously. Um, and Zhang is just one of these guys where, you know, he's a great guy to have in the mix, isn't he? You know, he really planted himself firmly in the middle of it with those he two really wins is, against, yeah. against Joe Joyce. And, and I, do, I really enjoy watching him because, yeah, he's 20 stone, 
and he's got these big heavy hands but he's actually just got really kind of good boxing mechanics and that knockout of Joyce last year was was a great example of it and he can do it with the right hand and the left hand you know either one of those big old hands it could could wreak some serious serious damage Barry and you just mentioned there about pretty much what polar opposites with regards to Deontay Wilder and Zhile Zhang yeah. are how does Joseph Parker go about this fight compared to how he went about the Deontay Wilder fight? Yeah, there's a difference, I, I would tell you. The thing is that th that it works so well against Wilder that you've been tempted to, and with another, when against another big puncher, will smother his work. That's what he did against Wilder. But the difference is, is Jang is technically very good. I mean, technically, one of the best heavyweights around, mm. I would say. Not the best, but top three, I would say. Five, top five, maybe. But with his power, it makes him really dangerous. I'm, I'm a big fan of it, actually. Now he has a better engine, all of a sudden. All of a sudden. <laughs> but, <get> <laughs> but, but he has, though. I think he showed that against uh, against um, against Joyce. He looked busier. I think against Hergovic, which everyone thinks he, he, he was unlucky, and maybe he was, but he didn't do enough. I mean, he had, he do, he, and he did in other fights. Forrest was one, wasn't he? Yeah, it? Jerry Forrest. He knocked mm. him down three times in the first four rounds and he got a draw. <laughs> like, yeah, but yeah. The thing is, he fight. works for 20 seconds in a round, but when he does work, it's unbelievable quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, he did it against Hergovic. He worked really, he did 20, 30 seconds of quality work and then did nothing else for two and a half minutes. I think, and I was thinking, oh, you think you're going to win this round? People for, especially if you do that early in the round, they would forget that. Mm. It was, it's almost impossible. All you remember is you haven't done anything. What That's why doing? fighters end the round strong, because you want to leave it, an impression with the judges. Yeah, but it mean, I mean, if you don't do nothing and just end the round strong, you're not going to get the round. But I mean, if you get the round relatively close and you finish quicker, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a chance that if it's close round, you might nick it. But like, he just doesn't do enough work. But against, against um, Joe Joyce, he looked really busier. And not too, he's not going to overexert himself because he's a massive league, 20 stone, like you said. But he's technically really good with power. So, I mean, he can pick his shots really well. It's a really hard fight for Parker, this is. Really hard. I think Parker's got to revert back to the old Parker where he uses his speed in boxing and hope Zhang is super economical like he was against Hergovic. <laughs> I find that either Parker wins this, I can't see how he wins. I mean, I feel really sorry because he's such a loveliest bloke, and I I never really go on this, do I? Because it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what what they who they are or what they're like. He's such a loveliest man that you want him to win, don't you? Though I'm a big fan of Jank, I think he he makes more waves in the division if he gets an opportunity to fight for the world title. But um, I think it's a hard ask for Pack. I really do. I I can't see. I think if he if he tries to smother the world against Wilder, when he box Wilder. He was always going to well box Wilder because everyone can outbox box Wilder because he's not allowed to well box. But to commit to go in, to what what he showed was tremendous bravery. The tactics were great, or they were Insane. kamikaze yeah, style, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. to to to, you know, to to smother the work or to stunt the growth of the shot, you got to be willing to take a shot. And what Parker has shown is how brave he really is, and he takes a good shot. He's a tough man. Isn't yeah, it? and with that, that that but that, that so that means you can do stuff well. But to dine on that, dine out on that against Yang, who is a better, well, he's not a better punch. No one's a better puncher than Wilder, but he has better technique. So he, he can he can shot Wilder can't short shorten his punches. Wilder just throws the shot, and where it lands, it causes mayhem. But where it lands, nobody knows, including himself. He just throws the shot, and if you're in line then you're unlucky. And if you're not in line, then it doesn't matter. He throws another one. Well, he didn't do that against Parker because every time he threw a shot, rather than look to run away like everyone else does, he went, fuck, it, I'm going right at you. Yeah, he showed that break. Right right yeah, hand, yeah. He, he, threw, yeah. He threw with him, didn't he? That was yeah, the, yeah. Who does that against Wilder? Who takes the risk? Andy Lee said afterwards, I think it might have been Dan Raphael, who said, oh, Wilder didn't do anything. And Andy Lee said he didn't do anything. It's because Parker was on the edge of punching range. And as soon as he threw the right hand, we threw the right hand straight yeah. back at him. And he get really and he get on him there yeah. when he straight away. Mm -hmm. And I think, but a uh, Jang will adjust his feet. If you do that against Jang, Southpaw as well, by the way, it always makes it more difficult. He'll adjust his feet and he throws up because he likes to show that right hook over the top uh, is is so accurate. It's a serious when, shot when you come forward as well. And he doesn't and and he has such good timing that he doesn't he doesn't have to he, he doesn't have to get speed in the shot because he's so heavy handed and he knows exactly when to throw it. That that time, you know, there's blind speed. Is where I say that all the time. Mm. Not speed, blind speed. But Parker hasn't got. He's fast, but he's not incredibly fast. So I think I just find it out how he all boxes him. You gotta hope that Zhang is the old Zhang, where the old Zhang is 54 now. 
is, is the old Zhang who doesn't have that engine that he's shown recently. Is that what podcast is? You have to try and maybe ne- just navigate the first three or four rounds, I think not gotta, take any damage. I think you got some in out, but again, you're not with the jab against the south ball who, who knows that the boxer knows how to step forward yeah. and throw that wrong right hook over the top and stuff and, and can throw, got good techniques, going to be difficult. And he's got good speed as well. He's a nice, loose yeah. puncher. Like those shots yeah. come out, like, they when flow he, out of him, don't he, he? He doesn't load when up. But he does that turn from the hips and the, and the shoulders, doesn't he? Mm, so he uses the, uses the weight like that without having the load, yeah, without doing it, without having ex- overexerting himself with his shots. But he needs to be busier. So if we see a busier, if we see a busier Zhang, then I, whatever Parker does, I think I think there's an answer for it all, for it all. And he, str- he really struggles. And however good his chin is and his stamina is, he's, it's going to be tested to the max. So you got to try and nick rounds and be busy and hope that Zhang in the tires quick. Cause I think with Zhang, it'll be one. I think I think Zhang's. I don't know what he trains like, but being that size. And some so, and some and some fights the way, the way he's turned up for fights and, and underperformed, I think I think he needs to whip crack him when he trains. Jang. He also has that long amateur career as well, where I feel like he's like he's sort of mastered the art of being a big lump as well, mastered yeah. the art of doing three threes. But I think I think when he gets when he got it, and those two those two Joyce fights, but no, we're basing it more on that. But I mean, this let's just base him on that in recent times, though. I think he trained really. He trained correct for those fights because he came in looking to be busy here. Then he said, "Then he has for a long time." I think. So, I think if if he's that, then Parker, I'm not a chance. Unfortunately, I think he had some sort of. I think he was hospitalized with dehydration or something like that after the Jerry Forrest fight. Um, but would you mentioned earlier the Hergovic fight was another example of him for three or four rounds. I mean, he dropped Hergovic with that right hook early on in that fight. And then really dominated the first three or four rounds, and yeah. then went to sort of not really pot shot him because in twenty stone you don't really pot shot, <laughs> but but still he's sort yeah. of like just but working but I, in little bursts. I, I, I was there for that one as well, and at the end of the fight, I felt like he probably had one. Or that I he, thought he nicked it with the yeah. knockdown only, but I didn't I expect him that, to get it. I thought that you know on said. balance, I felt like yeah, I think he's he's done enough there. But when he didn't get it, I didn't really. I, I blamed him. Mm. Yeah, me, because yeah. it was his own fault. You know, he, he didn't. He, he could have pressed that advantage home, and Hergovic, as it subsequently it turned yeah, out, man, yeah. had a lot of problems going into that fight, and he wasn't. He, he was there for the taking that night, yeah, Hergovic, yeah. and and on the night, he absolutely was. But yeah. Jang put himself in that position where he was. He should have won. And by the way, Hergovic is not the busiest of fighters either. By the no, way, no, no, he's not. But he so didn't win, and that was and that was his fault. But I, I. I, I hear everything you're saying there, Barry, but I just, I don't know. I think Parker's got this kind of mojo, this kind of force with him at the minute, this kind of almost intangible thing where he will be so confident they can find a way. And yeah. I think if he could take him into the second half, then, yeah, then I think that's, you know. But you got to take, take him in that second half. Yeah, he's got to make him work. Take him in the second half, not take too much damage and try and work the body. He's got to make him yeah. work. He's got to make Zhang work hard in that first half, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, without 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 taking, damage. taking too much damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's tricky. I mean, he's almost got to just like yeah, try and God, keep God, that tem- keep keep that tempo hey, high. Have we got a sandwich? <laughs> Barry, Barry making weight over here. Keep, keep <laughs> that, he's got to try and keep that tempo high. Make make Zhang work without really necessarily doing all that much himself. That's a piece of piss, isn't it? It's kind of yeah. it's that kind of kidology get- thing almost. That that the Adam Boo fighters, which Andy Lee was, have always been really really good at that kind of latent threat where you're kind of thinking something's coming any second and it doesn't really and you manage to boss it without really doing a lot yeah um but to do with that do with that alan booth way without no, that makes you that gives you the wide without stance. massive that, power but that is. no but i mean that that gives you that yeah tension i don't i don't think i will say heavyweight because you i mean you're you're wasting a lot of energy you're using those big muscles in the bottom of your legs and your ass that's why people like Groves and 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 the fighters do they? Hey, and yeah, they they tired in the latest shape because they they you know, they have the power. You got to put the boxing hasn't booth where I was saying it's not the case. I, what do I know? I never trained anyone, but I think you know if you have power, that style's great for you yeah. and speed. But the people like Conlon and and even even Josh Kelly to an extent have struggled a little bit with that style because they don't have natural power. So that takes a lot of energy having your legs wide and engaged constantly. It gives you that. But if you have the power, it means you can be more more assertive in your work, more explosive in your work, and it's generally a plus. And it's worth taking the risk of tiring those later rounds to be impressive or, or get the knockout in those early, you know, or up to wrong date. But really, it, make, it makes you an eight-round fighter, I think, that sort of style. Mm. 
It'll be an interesting fight. It'll be interesting to see. How bit, they, that might be the really that is. might be the best. I mean, there's a fucking fight. Few, few really good nah, fights nah, on nah, that nah, card. I know it is, isn't it? Um, but yeah, you just got to get the game plan right, and then just worry about the twenty stone southpaw Chinese guy who can knock a house yeah, down yeah, across from yeah. here <laughs> with either hand as well. I got, I got to say really quickly, it's, it's not quite. It's on the theme of the heavyweights, but because I was doing the thing for Rob Joshua, I look back and I I I, I, I watched it all pretty much. But is it is it run to win the Olympic medal? Oof. What did you watch? Did you watch all the fights? I didn't watch them. Yeah, there's a couple yeah. of them that you're yeah. not allowed to watch. No, but <laughs> well, allowed to watch the Savon fight. Yeah, no, but but that, 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 actually, I, I thought he lost the Savon fight. Yeah, I thought, thought he lost. The Savon. I thought he lost the Camarelli as well. I, I thought that was close enough though. The final. No, he watches it. Sorry, AJ. I'm not going to be inside. No, 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 no. But I thought, that, and the shit is all. But I mean, the people. The, 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 this is the fighters. He had the fight. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. He had to beat. He had to beat the the previous Olympic final. The book through the, the the silver and the gold medalist mm. in that in that run up, he, he gets Savon first, where he gets near the medals, then he gets Zhang, don't he? I think was it yeah, Zhang yeah. next? Then he then he got um, the other U- was a Ukrainian guy, um, Dichok, Dichko, Dichko, Ivan Dichko. Dichko. Dichko, yeah, Kazakh. Yeah, yeah. then he gets then he gets um, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was an incredible final, run that, uh, absolutely yeah. incredible. I mean, what run. a hard run that is, by, yeah. by the way, yeah. isn't yeah. it? I think you, know, you, 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 know, you don't get the credit for that, really. I know. He'd had less than forty amateur fights going into that Olympic Games. I think he doesn't really get the. I mean, no, obviously, he definitely, he definitely, he definitely gets the credit, yeah, but I, I think but one or two will, discerning yeah, voices will talk about the. Yeah, no, you, you can always look at the, the reality is if you if you're going to win an Olympic gold medal and you have and you have that kind of run, you need the rub of the green. We were talking about earlier, like the top 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 level sport. Yeah, yeah, you need. Need the need rub of the green. It doesn't. I'm not talking like outrageous slices of luck, but you need you need things to go your way. I was it's, to, it's as simple as that. I saw the kid on Facebook called Lee Burns. I boxed him um, in the semi-finals of the British Schoolboys, and he beat me. And then we boxed in England, the Wales International. And I beat him, and like that could have been either way. That could have yeah. been two-two, yeah. either way, or one-one yeah. in reverse. I could have gone to the British Schoolboys final. He could have been in the international. It was that. You know, I mean, yeah. those, 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 when you get to a level, whatever your level, that, the level of, of goodness, you no know, good level. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. You're talking. Yeah, with matches. the draw he had, he had a load of finals all in a row, basically yeah. a load of fifty-fifties all in a row. And if you're going to win four fifty-fifties in a row, you need. And also being at home helps. Yeah, you need you yeah, need for sure. you need the gods I, smiling on you a bit. I beat the Burns in Bridge End. <laughs> That's just how it is, you know. You look at any kind of major football final; they're really evenly matched. And generally speaking, the team that wins it will be the one where, you, like I say, you, you don't need an outrageous slice of luck. You just don't need anything to really go against you. Mm. That that's all it is. It, it could be an offside decision, well, not anymore, but it could be loads of different things. Uh, but there's generally that theme is there. You rarely see in a kind of fifty-fifty matchup in any sport a team still manage to win even if something fairly major has gone against them. It's just it's just not what happens. But it was a great run, but he lost against Savon. Yeah, I did think so as well. Sorry, AJ. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's in the books. I was going to say, I'm sure he's going to be a set, a set at home with his gold medal around his neck going, <laughs> oh, I really, I really got it. I really but do you know what I mean? Though, we forget that. I mean, because Zhang, he had to be Zhang for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's unbelievable. And Zhang is technically very good and with mad power, Good technique, great timing, great judgment of distance. That's what makes it such a really hard fight for Parker, and that's why you almost want to see Parker to win because of that alone. Because he just he's, ta- he's taking the biggest punch on the planet. Mm. He might to take make the second biggest. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. He could yeah. well be yeah. that. Yeah. He could well be that. Um, all for the, all for peanuts as well. He's getting paid. Yeah, we'll get out of bed for what he's getting, mate. Um, before before we move on, uh, Joseph Parker sparring with a certain Moses Italma in preparation for this. Now, I'm sure you won't mind me saying, I did, I did check in with Andy Lee recently to ask how those spars were going. Obviously, he's not going to say, oh yeah, you know, Joseph's terrible. But by all accounts, Moses Satalmo continues to give a very, very good account of himself in these top, top level sparring camps. And and for for the Tama, that's I think his development will be more about in the gym than it will in his fights, to be fair, because the level, I think, how good he is now, he, the people he's up against at the minute though I think that will change very quickly now it's going to be how long they can last not if he's going to be a threat to getting beat so I think him going around the gym and sparring quali- quality operators learning little tricks that he doesn't already know if there are any tricks he doesn't already know will help him and fill him with confidence because I think I'm, I can imagine he handles people in sparring he could because he's technically very good fast feet fast hands and tricky with his style he seems to me like a 
had he's harder than Spar than he is to fight. Mm. If that makes any sense. I see. I, see, I definitely yeah. understand what you mean. Because I I was always harder than Spar than I was to fight. And you hear, I mean, you hear a lot of ghost stories about him in the gym anyway. And by all accounts, he is a proper handful. Yeah, um, handful in the gym. And also, Andy has been sparring with Tyson Fury as well, of course. And also, yeah. was, also was preparing for Alexander Usyk, another another pretty dangerous, pretty good southpaw. Yeah, it's gold, isn't it? This yeah. kind of stuff. It's 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 absolutely ideal when you put it in tandem with actually then getting in the ring yourself nice and regularly, which which he has been. Uh, it's the ideal scenario. I think so. they, they need him more than he needs them. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, you right, think right about southpaw right heavyweight now. sparring yeah, right. at the top top level. How difficult? How, I mean, when you box, how difficult was it to get southpaw sparring we for just your did, weight? I never sparred my last fight. <laughs> True story. But I mean, you just you spar was in front of you. Yeah. Like it's just that like, you, you could grab. I mean, it was quite easy really to, because Wales there was a boxing gym every every other street yeah. but I mean as a kid but as, as a pro it was more difficult you had to go to the, the gym but it wasn't it was hard I, I used to grow up to Swansea spabbing in as a Mark and Ellie when he was six <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean you would you'd have to it was, it was difficult it wasn't like London where you know, you had, you know there's like gyms everywhere yeah, yeah. but yeah but it's, it's, it's hard it's difficult and, and when you go to the levels then you have to start paying and, you, and, and it becomes an expensive thing all of a sudden but um, for him it's fantastic for his development but for them Especially for someone like Guzik, too. He doesn't box nothing like Guzik, but he's still, you're boxing a southpaw there who has great footwork. And good fast hands. Yeah. Uh, but he'll spin around the tight. You get, if you ask him, if you're paying him enough, he will he will block more shots than, than he, than he, he won't step out too far like he probably would naturally. Yeah, yeah. He'll stay a bit closer and he'll pivot around the target. Pivot, like Joe Calzaghe, there you go, got yeah. the words out. But I, mean, no, I think he'll do that more for you because he has fast enough feet to be able to do that quite comfortable. And I think that's something like Fury, you'll have to get used to that quick adjustment of the, where the target is against music god i'd love to watch those fury spars imagine yeah that. like oh. you get so lucky sometimes you, you watch a good spa but something like that you just love to be a fly on the wall watching but it's still you know you have to say still the best heavyweight in the world um in there with the, apparently the next up um anyway next up here is another world title fight this is a brilliant card it really is i looked through it uh today when we were kind of going through it you get you get shocked but anyway ray vargas Versus Nick Ball. Now, this, Barry, is a fight that I've really, really wanted to see almost as much as I've wanted to see the face-off. Because you've got Ray Vargas, who's six foot seven or whatever, yeah. um, and Nick Ball, who's four foot five. Is, is it, they reckon that because he's only five seven. That's bollocks. It's on box right. We We were out with him in... Uh, it's that same as yeah. like Kolomatov. Kolomatov, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's five seven. He looks like... Nah. He looks nah, he's up. a big guy. But Ray Vargas, is, defi yeah. Ray Vargas yeah. is definitely yeah. five eleven, six foot. Like we, we, yeah, I remember standing next to him when he came over to fight Gav McDonald. I did that fight. And he's the same height as me. Yeah, he's and a I'm five foot eleven. He's a big lump, and yeah. Nick Ball is is not the biggest of lumps, but has a world title shot against an established proper world champion in Ray Vargas. He's earned it as well, mind. I think. No, I I I think that um, the last fight he had, Dog Bay. Dog Bay. I can't remember his name. <laughs> he's only been a world champion, but Dog Bay. That was like it's not quite the same thing, but that was that was like, um, Josh Taylor's postal before he boxed Brancheck. Though Postel was probably a harder fight than Brancheck. And McGuigan's Pedro's, I didn't say that because it was, it was, I saw it on Facebook the other day. Um, Laporte, before he boxed Pedro, this is that equivalent to that, but it, uh, maybe not, not as high as quality as the McGuigan's. But having that fight, Dog Bay was a really, that was, on paper, it was a really hard fight for him. But a guy who, who was still on his day could win a world title, Dog Bay, but maybe not quite there. But, well, no, no he is there. But, no, that's the real test where you know not in this generation you don't take that risk really before you, if you if you if you're highly ranked and you're going to get a world title shot then that might be a risk too far now why would you want to risk that because you've got a world title shot you know pending pretty much if you can just go, just get another win defend the international title again and I'll just cement you in, in line. That, that shows the confidence they've got in him. Yeah. I mean, in and hindsight, right. you look at it and you go, what brilliant matchmaking. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. But yeah. 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 if it goes wrong, you go, what are you boxing yeah. him for? You I mean, could have boxed for a world look, title. Look at him career wise, and he is really interesting because he started off, um, you know, just boxing in small halls in Liverpool, didn't he, on Pat Barrett shows, I think, pretty much, and then got picked up by Frank Warren. And and, and he's never, he, he just bypassed the, the, the domestic scene. Um, which people often get criticised for doing, but, oh, yeah, but the way that he's done it has just been, it's just been ideal because he got that fight against Isaac Lowe. Which that was, was his sort first. of domestic issue. Yeah, level, yeah, wasn't it? Isaac like, Lowe had a, he had a yeah. mad load of draws, didn't he? For yeah. Yeah, 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 British yeah, yeah, and yeah. European Ryan titles. Walsh, Ryan, Walsh, Ryan Walsh, yeah. Dennis Shaylan, he, yeah. he had one for the English as well, I can't remember who that was against, but 
but yeah so anyway if you've drawn for all of those against good good fighters yeah. too and um and he just he gave isaac Lowe an absolute thrashing at wembley and from that point onwards you know he won that wbc silver that night and he's defended it um and he's and he's got some good rounds in, and he's had stoppages late, hasn't he? He's had a couple in the twelfth round, and and he looks like he, he really looks like the real thing. He really does look like the real thing, and yeah, so I I, 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 I fancy so. him quite I, strongly against Ray Vargas. I don't fancy him strongly, but I do fancy him. I I I've been saying he's going to win, so I stick stick my ground. But I've sort of um, started to bottle it a little bit. Stylistically, well, everything points to Vargas. Doing yeah, a job in it. this is obviously. I mean, <laughs> yes, but also but, you know, Vargas has not looked sort of scintillating really in a while he beat uh, Mark McSayo but had to be, pick himself off off yeah. the deck for that Mark McSayo is a good puncher as, as is Nick Ball you never know Vargas had a long hard career it's not, mm. not still I know he's massive, every fight fancy, still every like, fight's gone the distance including that Gavin McDonald from that point onwards yeah. like nine fights they've all gone the distance eight have been world title fights it's you know, that defeat yeah. Derek. It. Yes, loads of experience which is it depends whether you feel like he might be getting towards that stage where he's tipping over from being really seasoned to being a little bit shop worn the, the energy that ball has though especially when he gets on your ball that's it and so if he is anywhere near that tipping point then nick ball could be the man to make ball, you feel it ball does any of that semicircle on the body at all but ball uses that yeah. really well he gets to the side of you very quickly and he explodes into every shot and the height thing seems like a crazy but he's used to that i know it might be a few extra more inches but i think sometimes being low if you can use, except for shortening the distance, and that's all. Oh, Vargas is going to control that. If he can, if Vargas can control with the jab, even when balls coming coming on, can take a step with the jab, the jab, and then step back with it. So he, he makes ball walk onto it and then spin off. Then ball might struggle, but if he's just going to back a straight line, trying to run to him in straight lines, I think the ball will ball will be zigzagging his way in. I think I do. And 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 I think when he gets close, ball will 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 just throw so many shots and move around the target. So he won't be in front. You'd look to fire back and hold. He'll spin round to his right, and he'll be right through the middle of the shots. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a, a, a stand-up performance from him. He'll need it because the close getting, for getting from A to B is going to be the biggest part. I think once he gets there, he can be effective. But getting from A to B, but he's had his whole career like that because he know he's small. In, you know, he's massively thick set and yeah, strong yeah he'd always fit. be boxing guys or sparring with guys yeah. who are bigger and longer and his yeah. engine is, 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 is his plus he has a great engine and he's and I just think time is everything you've got a guy like you said he's been you know, one of those world title fights going the distance is garnish and experience but also you know every fight takes a little bit out to you you know he's been a pro for what, 15 years yeah. maybe something like that he's been a, so you know you just think maybe you know, it might just be the right time for him and is he it, finally got beat yeah, got beat by Sharky Foster and didn't box great that night, um, mm. Ray Vargas. He's no longer with Nacho Beristain as well, who, oh, was, okay. um, who was obviously a legend. Was he for that fight? Yes. Right, so but that's a real long-standing yeah. relationship. Well, so they, they were together, then they were apart, then they were together, now they were apart again. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, he's no longer with Nacho Beristain. I think, look... Like, Where's he gone now then? Do you know? I don't know. But okay. everything points... It'd be interesting to find out during the week, yeah. won't it? To be honest, everything points to Vargas dominating it really let's be honest that uh, you would think that, that with, the, with what, he, what he can do and what he's shown he can do when oh, you, you look at, at the resume yeah, yeah he's, yeah, he's, he's got a, a clear clear favorite he's proven and, and that, the, that the style like that he boxes he does utilize he yeah. boxes like that I, we did an interview with him in november 2022 in mexico and i said to him like i didn't say anything because i speak spanish but kieran simpson shout him out said like do you feel like there's this sort of perception of him as like a non-Mexican Mexican because he doesn't box like a Mexican yeah. at all, does he? Boxes nice and long, controls the distance. If he can win 120, 108 times three, no problem, take the belt, off we go. And you feel like, I do feel like he's maybe not unfairly criticized because of that, but I don't feel like he's held in the same sort of reverence as even like a, I don't know, like a Mauricio Lara or someone no. like that who's like entertaining, come forward, try and clean you out. Yeah, you can outbox him and stuff, but Mexican warrior and what no, have you. I think you. you're right. But he is a very right. good fighter, Ray Vargas. Yeah. And stylistically, I do think this does favor him. But when you look at him, just looking through Nick Ball's resume now, he carries the power late as well. You mentioned yeah. about him having that, uh, the good engine and he does seemingly load up with every shot and he can do it from round one to 12. He has two 12 round knockouts. Mm. So he can carry that power late into the fight, but it's, it's closing that distance, isn't it's it? It's the legs for him. He pushes mm. off his legs. So I don't think he loads up the body. I mean, he's got he's full of muscle, but he, he pushes off every shot. Every shot he puts. So he, everything's every shot. But he, he, I don't think he 
he like that so much with it. He just makes sure he gets all that much, all the, the proper turn and the push off his back leg all the time, or his front leg actually. He pushes off. He uses every muscle in his body to make the make the shot tell. But yeah, but again, from A to B, that's going to be the biggest problem. Obviously, you don't need to be a boxing connoisseur to understand that, do you? When you've got a five foot two and a six foot fighter, but I mean, but sometimes it's, but he does he does close the distance very quickly. And like you said, it's a problem for both of them because for Nick Ball. Um, as, as yeah, as, as you pointed out, the, 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 he's never had an opponent who isn't taller than him, so he's used to that. Vargas is tall, so he'll be used to fighting guys shorter yeah. than him as well, but not Nick Ball short, really. Mm. And I think that you know, from 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 what I've been told by by various people, punching down is quite difficult. Mm. It's the accuracy you can get. Yeah, the accuracy it's right. difficult catching someone on the way in if he's short and boxes short, then that's that's a tricky thing. But and he's not been the most busy. He's not been the most active. No, no, he really Ray hasn't. Vargas. He's boxed yeah. three times since no, since uh, July 2019. Yeah, so, so he so boxed once in 21, once in 22, once in 23. And yeah. one of them was a loss to a Sharky Foster, and he almost got stopped by Mark McIsaac. Mark McIsaac dropped him heavy in that fight. He obviously got up, and Mark McIsaac is a good fighter. You yeah, see his knockout good, the other yeah. week, clean mate out of a left hook. That was a mad knockout. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, a good it, fight, it, isn't it? It is really is a yeah, great fight. It really great is fight. a great fight. That's a proper world title fight. So, yeah. so you like want to so you want to win a world title? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If Nick Ball wins a world title, that's a proper world title oh, yeah. win. Like, yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. The scout throwing a WBC Davis champion. Like, you know, well, yeah, he's never yeah. lost at that weight. Paul yeah. Hodgson, there, just like Paul. Yeah, yeah. It is all title. Right. Okay. We're going to move on. We're almost uh, coming to the end of the show. We're going to talk about Mark Chamberlain versus Gavin Gwynn. One or two eyebrows raised, Andy, about this fight going to Saudi. It seems to me that this would have been brilliant to watch at York Hall, but, you know, we're going to watch it on this stacked Saudi extravaganza instead. Well, they must be getting more money for it. If, yeah, of course. If that's yeah. the case, yeah, of course, it's good for enough. them. Like, yeah. But, yeah, but it seems, to, yeah. If they're not getting more money for it, then what, what, it's What title's on the line here? It's European. Is it on right, the line? It is the European, is it? I don't know if it is He's on European the European champion. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not you, sure. I thought we, maybe we it wasn't by, one. We all go by box track, don't we? And, and it's not, it's not but on they, there, But is they it? worked it out, didn't they, for the British title, for Wardley and Wardley and Adelaide, didn't they? Yeah. originally that wasn't going to be on the line, yeah. and then it was. And so I, d I don't know is the answer. I will find be. out during the week, but... Uh, but um, well, Gwyn deserves the defending surely. champion title, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Barry... Gavin Gwynn's last performance, not not the best um, last oh. time out, but again, in with a very very capable and obviously very experienced uh, customer. Yeah. But you actually called this fight pretty much the day after we, we were talking about it, the Gavin Gwynn fight that he would get, you know, s disrespectful, they signed, served up. Yeah. They to signed Gwynn. They signed. Uh, that's, that's just the way all, all it works. They yeah. signed Gwynn for Chamberlain or Nooks. And Gavin Gwynn would have known that's that. That's what I thought. Well. That that doesn't matter for Gavin Gwynn. He's made a career of being mm. the B side. That's fine with him. He's all right with that. And he got his opportunity against Joe Cordina. No, but he wasn't. No, they, that was they were building Joe Cordina. They weren't building him. You know what I mean? Otherwise, that would that would have been put on in Wales. Should have been put on in Wales. That that yeah. was a British Commonwealth title fight, lightweight. But you know, but. So you know he's he's, he's okay. He, that they um, use that fuel to make him a better fighter. He's a hard man to beat because he's a hard man to hurt. Chamberlain's got power. He punches clean, so you'll see, we'll find a little hard he does hit. To be honest, but Gwyn's massive for the weight. You know, using that shell like defense to try and walk you down close. You know he, he absorbs your shots, tries to block, block and work. You know and try and, and work behind the jab and really just you know and then try and smother you with his work. That's what he'll try and do in the end. So Chamberlain's gonna have to work hard. He's gonna hit him clean early, I think. But yeah, so so I think it's all. It's, I think we find out how good Chamberlain is. I think on the night and if, if he is what they're told he's gonna be, he'll get he'll get over the line. You know. I th it's sort of too disrespectful for Gavin Green because he's a European champion. But you sort of think if you're the fighter that people are saying you might be, then you have to beat a Gavin Green. But like, this is a European title fight, so you know if you don't beat him, there's no shame. That if you're if you're at that level, that's a good level to to, to find to find out where you where you where you where you stop at. I, yeah, I I don't know. I I, I just think Gavin Green style doesn't really equate to me so much so I always think that he can be outboxed mm. quite easily outboxed not like the Marsili fight I mean, Marsili was was keeping it nice and long and moving obviously another southpaw yeah the, the, but I think that would think cause he, cause he, because he's so big Gwyn and he does walk you down and he punches long so sometimes he gets you on the on, on the pull out and then, and then rains down on you but 
and and his relentless pressure breaks you. You know, you know that I think that that works sometimes. So if you if you fold the tank up and you have fast feet and fast hands, I always think you should beat him. As long as you can twist close to the target and then you and then you don't you don't come out in straight lines and you punch in flurries. So when he's looking to work, you get there first with faster hands because again, Green's not the fastest of punchers, though he's, he's methodical, but it's it's the one pace and it's relentless. But you should be get you should be able to get in brr, and out. So you come in one angle, brr, out that angle. One, two, three, four, out that angle. Spin him all the time, keep him keep him turning constantly. Chamberlain doesn't box that way. So that's what makes an interesting fight. Chamberlain's gonna try and hurt him long. I think, you know, but you might find it a hard night for him. But I think time is everything, and I just think he might just be the f the, f the freshness of him might just be enough, and the, and the weight of the shot. I don't think he's gonna knock Gwyn out or anything, but I think he might just be enough to push Gwyn back or stop him from smothering you, and and he just gets over the line. I should say I hope I'm wrong because he's Welsh, Gwyn, but I don't show bias to Welsh beatboxers. <laughs> Come on, Taff. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's I a good. It's a. I think it's a really good fight. It's it a, is it's a really a, good. It's fight. A, and it, but it might be a, like a. a Transitional fights, but one I don't think Gwyn's declining, but I don't think he's going to get any better. But I think I mean disrespectful to Gwyn as well because I don't think he, I didn't think he get where he w is now. Uh, so I've sort of undersold him for a long part of his career. So I, I always thought he was a solid well. pro, but I never thought yeah, he was going to be a great run, isn't he? Yeah, you, you go back to so Cordina. So you had Cordina a couple of fights later, box Tennyson, then Sean McComb, Jack O'Keefe, yeah. Luke Willis. I well, did the Sean McComb. He quit. He made he made McComb quit. It was a good. It was a good. It was a really good scrap as well. It was really good scrap. Mm. But he wouldn't let McComb have. He, sorry, he wouldn't let McComb have any any sustained um, he literally just success. Turned around, didn't he? Every time McComb landed, was good. And he's fast, fast. He could punch him in McComb, and and he just wouldn't have it. Gwyn, he's, like, oh, he's he's tough. Gwyn, by the mm. way, and he'd be fit as a fiddle. I know that much. He'll, he'll he'll be he'll be as fit as he can be. He might be the age factor now. I'm not quite sure. And our weight gotta kill him. It's just massive for the weight. They say he doesn't. Like, but everyone says that, don't they? Really? But he's fucking massive, yeah, like. Because yeah. he's not even that skinny, by the way. No, he's got no, that, like, no, big he's back, yeah, isn't yeah, he? No, he's, he's massive, isn't he? Back. I know. Yeah. yeah. But some people just freaks of nature, and some people just do that. So maybe I hope that is the case for him. But I you know if Chamberlain can hurt him enough just to make him slow down, then he might get outworked, and I'll and I'll, I'll just out out fought, to be honest. I I think I thought they were a little harsh on him against um, Marsili. Yeah. The whole took all commentary stuff. I didn't, you know, I, I thought they were a little bit like, like that's how he fights, that's his style. Yeah, like trying to walk you down. He, he hasn't got many gears to his work, but the gear he has is quite effective. Yeah, but he sustains but, it, yeah. It but against a out. tricky, a tricky south ball who's in and out of fleet foot and fleet hand, that's it's the worst style for him, mm. to be honest. That is the worst style, but Chamberlain's not that style because Chamberlain wants to hold his feet to get purchase on the shots. No, that's what he needs to do. But also that helps Gavin Green to establish a, a distance to throw his shots, because he is six foot, six foot, six foot one. Not sure, so but he's big. Yeah, he's a yeah. big fighter. Are you surprised they're making this now, Andy? Um, well, you've got I mean, Mark Chamberlain and Sam Noakes has been the fight that everyone's been talking about on that side of the fence over at Queensbury. Surprised they're they're putting Chamberlain in with with Gavin Green? Slightly, yeah, because I, I do think it's. I mean, it's a massive win for him if he can get it yeah. because we know what Gwyn is, I think, in terms of the style, as Barry was talking about there, in terms of the the minerals and, and what he's achieved and the level he's at. And if there's any kind of weak point with Chamberlain, it, whether it's he doesn't hit as hard as maybe we think he does at that level or his chin isn't as good as it needs to be at that level or his gas tank or mentally if there's a well Gwyn will find them mm. yeah he will find them um so if Chamberlain could come through this then fair dues you know that is a big big win but I think Gwyn will look at it and just think yeah I will find those weaknesses they are there they will be there and I will find them and I'm going to make you know, this is going to this is going to be a horrific night for you it's going to be a horrible night that you will never forget. That's that's what he's thinking. Whereas Chamberlain, obviously, from the other side, is thinking, "Yeah, brilliant. You know, I can, I can." It's, it's a it's a huge title to win this. It's a huge title to win, and it's a massive step forward, and and just a number of very important boxes ticked. 
So I really like it. It's a fight. I'm, I'm, I'm all over it. I really like. You it. You keep calling in a hard fight, see? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you did, did, yeah. Because yeah. you did that one. It was in a clear yeah. winner. I was, I was, I was there. I was in a, I was in a box watching it. But he kind of grew into it, didn't he? Yeah. As, as like, like you say, all, all he kind, the of, then he he kind of builds, he sort of gathers steam, doesn't he? Like a kind of well, like, almost, like almost, a train. He just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And, and like you say, when when he's in with someone like like Marcelli, it it kind of you're you're losing and looking bad until you're not. Yeah, yeah. and that fight. I mean, I know the shoulder. That one, was that always going to be the plan, wasn't it, it? And it started to go that way as well. Yeah. Obviously, the injury is completely legitimate, and Marcelli, you know, yeah. it was unfortunate for him. Yeah, but another six minutes or so of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and until you reach that tipping point, you're losing, yeah. and you may be losing every round, but you just stick to the plan, don't yeah. you? Believing that that's what will happen. Yeah, I, do, I think it's a really good fight. Yeah. I, I quite like Mark Chamberlain. Yeah. He's, he, he doesn't like I don't know if it, how much you've just spoken to him or been around no, him but doesn't, much, doesn't but keep you know he keeps being very simple yeah. not, uh, by all accounts doesn't overthink sort of boxing and keeps yeah. it quite and I think his win over um, Jeff Afori certainly aged well yeah, what, what, sure, what yeah, Jeff yeah. Afori's been up to recently yeah, yeah. Um, obviously boxing boxing Callum French again isn't it they're doing the rematch for that I think so yeah yeah doing the rematch I watched him, I watched him in Dubai yeah, in January I watched him as well he boxed uh, Badger's uh, Al Samreen yeah. yeah that was a really yeah. good fight yeah, that. Good really fight, yeah. good fight um, again another fight he looked like you know Sarim was going oh that's good doing a job on him here mm. and before he just he's there on constantly there but if he? you think about what Mark Chamberlain did to him he battered yeah, him and yeah. stopped him in what, four or five rounds of one oh, I see it here. yeah but, five rounds but he's up him. against a tougher yeah, yeah, yeah. man here okay, and he does he just he just let you, he doesn't let you work he has no choice he knows he can he cannot box you he's not as fast as you he maybe doesn't think as, he doesn't think as fast as you Gavin Gray, oh, this disrespectful maybe. So he just makes you work. Show me what you got. I know we're going to be brilliant. I'm just going to make you do it though. He did have a Sean McComb. Just made him work really hard. And then when he starts, when he when he feels you slow down and he feels it here on the arms, he must feel the different weight of the pun punch or the, the punch must be a little bit slower. So you must have that intelligence to know this is my time to go. And then he just starts letting his hands go. I, like, I mean, I really enjoy watching fighters. So everybody gets obsessed with, you know, I want to be able to do it any which way, and, yeah, and that, 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 that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? But very, very, very few people can actually do that. And and I, I, I just I really like watching fighters. You know what they are. This is what I am. This is what I can do. This is a level I've done it to. What can you do? Yeah, and he won't be disheartened if he loses the first exactly. three or four rounds because exactly. he'll think yeah, that when it comes to seven, eight, nine, you've never been there before. Yeah, well, he's been there, but not in a fight like that. And you always want to, you always want to win the. You know, you, if if you got a four 0 lead, it's better than being four 0 down. But I mean, it's a twelve round fight. For yeah, the if reason. you're making him work yeah. for those four rounds as well, yeah. and it's taken a lot out of him. Those um, are great fights, aren't they? Those ones where you, yeah, you, somebody builds up that lead, and then it's that real bottle test. It gets to five and six, can and you, you can just say, "Oh, can you?" And then they're kind of like having to dig in and always, hang on. You know, you can you do it? But yeah. you always need to fight them with the, who has the leads and lucky. Oh, I just couldn't keep hold of it. It's not. No, it was the case there. No, yeah. there's nothing. There's nothing unlucky about winning by stoppage, even if it's with two seconds to go. It's mm. not unlucky. It's not lucky. It's but, that's but, what you were. But I'd rather be four rounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. definitely. You, you've got to win less rounds then. Okay, right. Uh, we'll do a very very quick one because we we want to wrap things up and do some predictions. Uh, fight that's just been added. Obviously, by the time this goes out, it's a week ago. Uh, Israel Madrimov and Magomed Kurbanov for the WBA Super Welterweight title, the vacant title, of course, formerly held by Jamal Charlo. Really interesting fight. Mandramov's been kind of, I don't know, sort of came on the scene and everyone was talking about him. Then he sort of went away a little bit and then he had that really good performance in, or he started a really good performance against Soro in the, in the rematch and mm. then the head clash yeah. and that. Kind of, so yeah. he sort of had a bit of an up and down career as has Magomed Kurbanov. Obviously he had that fight with Liam Smith and then did, he beat Patrick win. Teixeira. No, but he's and he was very, very poor against Michelle Soro as well. So this is kind of like a it's a fight between two guys where they've not had things very smooth in their no, career. It's strange, isn't it? But should make for a good fight, Andy. No, it definitely should make for a good fight. I mean, um, Madrimov. I remember seeing him first as an amateur at the World Championships in 2017, and he'd moved up to middleweight, or he'd appeared at middleweight. And Melikuzia, Bektimir Melikuzia. It seemed to me had been kind of shunted up to light heavyweight, almost to kind of accommodate him. And I saw him give a, a lad from Turkmenistan a terrible beating. Uh, and then he got knocked out in the quarterfinals. But, you know, he, he looked really good. And I thought he was going to stay in the system for the for the Olympics. And he decided to turn pro. Did actually go back for an Asian championships, the same one that Jalolov did, um, but got knocked out in the quarterfinals. 
Um, and that kind of came to a halt there. And since then, he's been concentrating on the pros. But I mean, he had a he first had a WBA eliminator four years ago, I think, <laughs> back in 2019. I was looking at this fight yesterday, and then he's had those couple of he's, he's had some strange finishes to fights as well, yeah. which hasn't really helped an awful lot. He had one against um, Eric Walker. That's right. Yeah, that's where, right. Where, where he referee... basically knocked him out and the referee picked him up and said, no, yeah. carry on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah which <laughs> like was extremely knocked, odd. Knocked him clean and out. And then against Sorrow in the first fight, the bell starts ringing and he keeps punching and the referee didn't stop him mm. and then stopped the fight. Um, and then he had the rematch where the, the cut happened. And the yeah. yeah, so it's all been... It's all, yeah, 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 terrible cut. It's, yeah. Been, it's, been, it's been weird for him, yeah. but, but he is, you know, he's a good, strong fighter. Um, is this for the WBA... Regular as we would I call mean, it. Moving, uh, the I mean, I don't think he's officially vacated. It. Maybe during the week. We'll, we'll find out during the week anyway <laughs> as to what exactly is going on there. But but yeah, he's been in and around that mix for a long time. Uh, moved quickly, a bit like his his his, his stable mate um, Bivol did with the WBA as well. And Kurbanov has got great backing. You know, I mean, we've got world of boxing behind Madrimov. They certainly used to be. I think they I think they still are. And behind Kurbanov, you've got. The Titovs, the Russian mm. copper company, those are two mega yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thrones in in Russian Eastern European boxing. And Kurbanov's undefeated. Every fight has been in Russia, usually in that stronghold of Ekaterinburg, where if it's close, you're going to get it. Um, but, and that's true of lots of places. Yeah, Liam Smith, for example, I felt Liam Smith won that fight. Most people did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, um, but he didn't. He didn't get the decision. And Kurbanov. He's a good fighter, though, Kirby. He is a good fighter, yeah, so but you can look at his record and say, well, what has he really done, even though he's 25 and 0? Yeah, imagine what looks. Well, he got very, very fortunate against Michelle Sorrow. Very, very fortunate. Michelle Sorrow deserved to beat him. Uh, one by split decision, and yeah, that that was. I mean, yeah, he was really poor that night. I actually thought the Liam Smith fight was was quite close. I didn't think it was the the. Sorry, Liam. I don't think it was the. Definitely watches. A massive, massive robbery like everybody else. Oh. I thought Liam Smith maybe nicked it, but it was one yeah. of those where I thought, mm, I don't think you're going to get that in Russia. I, I, I yeah, think I had it like six each or seven five yeah, Liam Smith. Yeah, you, I can do what you're talking about. That's all right, that's fine. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the, that was, uh, when was that though? That was, it was on, because it was on. How many years ago? I went watching it on Fight TV. It was, yeah, it was on Fight TV but, on a but, Friday night, Al Siesta. But what year was that, 2020? So it was a while ago. You don't yeah. be you don't be watching boxing for like twelve months at the time. It so was for. shut up. It was, was yeah, yeah. he was out he was out then by I thought Liam Smith to be fair. Twenty twenty one. Hello. May twenty twenty one. You all over the place over there. A kind of an interesting thing that, that that popped up during some of my research for this one is research was He <laughs> from what I from what I saw and could work out and this was something that was kind of in my brain anyway he won he won a gold medal at the 2008 world youth championships but he was born in 1995 so he was 13 no that's impossible yeah. start him young so either Russia. it's a different Kurbanov and there are quite a lot of Magomed Kurbanovs knocking around amateur boxing that I've seen down the years but if you just look at his box rack and go to his amateur record and see if that shows up it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's on his Wikipedia. Yeah. It's, the heavyweight, it's on his it? Wikipedia, but at the same time, he's, he's apparently born in 1995. Yeah. But wins an, a world it's youth a, yeah, in 2008, one, um, which would make he would have been 13 at the time, and that's not happening. It starts from start him young, mate. There's no way that's happening. So I don't really feel like I can kind of interrogate him about it during the week. <laughs> but I do need to find out. Yeah. Yeah, if you were a real journalist, you would. Though, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know what I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Through a translator, through through a terrifying Russian translator. <laughs> yeah, no. Tell I him he's a liar. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in a good way. Not like he won yeah. 25 boxing 17 year old. Yeah. He was 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I could just, yeah, exactly. Well, no, he's too modest. So did you, is it, did you win a, yeah, I did, yeah, I did, yeah. Bullshit. He's a good you know, fighter. I, I think this is a no, good little, it is a good fight. Yeah, it's, it's a good, good little fight. clash of styles as well, because I think, like, Madrimov, Kerbinov, on the eye test, Madrimov, yeah, it should win. Passes, yeah. Yeah, but I remember because before he boxed Liam Smith, and I hadn't watched him until the Liam Smith fight. I remember him coming out and thinking, "God, he doesn't box like a Russian." If that makes sense, like he was sort of like he was sort of low lead hand, yeah, bending yeah. at the waist and stuff. I was like, he's boxing like a Midwest American, not like a mm. sort of he's Russian. You think like good in and out, straight shots, a bit old. Oh, it's lazy comparison. Um, and whereas Madrimov is kind of like, one of the things that I always thought from Madrimov is that it was a lot of like wasted movement in his work. He's always hopping around and jumping from different angles and then he sort of seemed to just calm down a little bit in that second Michelle Sorrow fight and then obviously the fight 
got yeah. canned after three rounds or but, whatever but it was. you know what? Though? Sometimes you, some people, and you've got to learn the can down as you get no purges on your punches, but sometimes that movement, it seems like wasted movement, but that keeps you relaxed. Some people need that. I keep and, and gives you your rhythm. Do you know what I mean? So feel, it seems like it's a waste. He does it to show off. He's like, um, what's his name? Yeah, young Ben Whitaker. All the stuff he does. Like, you know, it seems like he's just doing it to show off. But I think a lot of it, it's just, it's almost like the nervous energy thing. It keeps you relaxed as well. It keeps you in your in your rhythm, in your flow. You need to do something in between not doing nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In between, in, oh, that makes no sense. You need to do something in between doing stuff. If that yeah, well, some yeah. fighters go for a walk or whatever. Like, the break, it's like yeah, yeah, not yeah. breaking the concentration, trying to keep, yeah. The trying to keep yeah, that yeah. flow, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like a, and, and it's almost like they're almost on the spectrum sort of thing. They need to, like they can't have any sort of like no quiet time in the in the ring or something's always got to be happening. So when you're not doing work, you're doing something all the time. Like I had the Barry Jones flick with the leg, didn't I? To flick my leg, my left leg, Barry Jones shuffle, we called it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the worst, no, no one copied it. But yeah, no, and all you know, the people like click their shoulders or move their neck or whatever it is. You know, it's always just something yeah. like like a, certain, like a nervous thing. Sometimes that movement just keeps you nice and relaxed. And it seems like you're wasted energy, but you need to do it, or or you're just wasting energy. Well, no, but you no no. I, I, the boxers have a kind of a lot of them. They have a kind of beat, don't they? In the secrecy, yeah, yeah, they yeah. just want to keep it going. Whether it's it, and you when you watch them enough, you 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 see it. It's just those little things that just keeps everything moving. When McGregor used to this, didn't he? Pick up his shorts. And so yeah. yeah, John Ryder had John like four Ryder different ones. Yeah, yeah little ticks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I mentioned him earlier, Paul Hodgson was the same sort of thing. He'd do that. He obviously seen it from McGregor, but it was almost like a relaxed, like, so yeah. when he boxed yeah. Steve Robinson, every time he does, like, the shots, Robinson went bang, 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 bang. And, and, you know, and you, you find it a thing, but... A tell. Yeah. Okay, right. We... I used to have a thing like that. I used to flick my hair. <laughs> God. Love those days. We have reached the end of today's episode. Um, we obviously don't have. We, we, we're going to do a second one. We're not going to do one. Um, so it's going to come round <laughs> to prediction time. So we're going to start from the bottom and work our way to the top. And he's going to come to you first. Israel Mandramov versus Magomed Kurbanov. Um, I mean, I'm commentating on these. Is the only ah, problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So am I. I'm commentating you don't on these. Care. <laughs> yes, I do. I, know. I have integrity. Which which makes my contribution quite 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 dull. All um, again. But but I, but I can it's, I can talk you. In, I can talk <laughs> in terms of I can talk in terms of like who I would make the favourite. I think yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Um, I I would I would make I would install Majumov as a favourite in this fight. And myself. he is it is for the regular belt. Uh, Jamel Charlo still hasn't officially yeah. vacated. I would imagine that it would probably that'll be. happen and then they'll get elevated. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine yeah. so. Barry. Yeah, well, I I commentate on it, so oh. I don't like the lead. I don't know shit. Yeah, I think Madrimov. I think I think those points, yeah. but um, yeah, I think I think he gets over the line. I think he'd have a tougher night than maybe like I said about the eye test. He might have a tougher night. What you think? But yeah, I do think I I do think you get your your win. I'm gonna go for yeah. Madrimov points. I'd like to see. I know you, I completely get what you're saying. But I would like to see him. Like he looked a lot more. Yeah, grounded and focused, and yeah, 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 like a, like he learned how to box pro. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. In, in the second Michelle Soro fight, it just didn't last very long uh, because of the the head clash. But I would like to see that. I'd like to see him make a statement yeah. because that kind of that was on Jazora bill, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that ver that that kind of one fifty four pound division now, like it's going to be somebody yeah, needs yeah, yeah. to stake a claim. Like, mm. I would like him to look fantastic yeah. and Tim Zhu to look fantastic oh, yeah. against Keith Thurman. Oh, Tim Zhu and then there's a big fight to make. Is there. that is that are we are we go into that? No, no, no. <laughs> we only do world title fights. It's one fifty five, so we can't do that one. Um, right. Anyway, we're going to come back round the other way, Barry. Going to come to you for Mark Wanker. Chamberlain versus that, yeah. Gavin Gwynn. Uh, well, being being you know being a patriotic Welshman. I just think we. I got a feeling we're just going to see something a little bit that we haven't seen off Chamberlain. And I do think he'll he'll squeak home. I think he might even drop Gwyn on the way to a points victory. But he'd have to work for it, mm. and he's gonna and, and we're gonna find out what his bottles like and his resilience and how he copes with pressure after nine rounds, whether he's ahead or not, so relevant. But I think yeah. But I think I think he gets home. I think that go points as well. I think he gets home. Just Andy, who's the favourite? <laughs> yeah, I, I think on body of work, on body of work, you've got to install Gwyn as the favourite. Yeah, definitely. On achievement, he has to be. I mean, I, I don't see any argument with that. But that doesn't 
that's not to say that Chamberlain can't make the step up and that's why this is such an interesting one because it is a big step up yeah. I don't know for Chamberlain I don't know for Chamberlain by stoppage mm. and I agree with you Barry I think we're going to I've sort of looked at it because when we've spoken about Sam Noakes and Mark Chamberlain I feel like Sam Noakes more obviously passes the eye test whatever mm. level but because Jim, Jim's the better fighter he's he? awkward and he's like he's been in the gym with um with Josh Pritchard and who's part of the Morrigan yeah. training team and he says he's got this and you kind of look oh, at well, him well, if he's, he must be brilliant no, then. No, no, no. <laughs> if, you look, if you look at the um, if you look at his fights you sort of look, he doesn't load up on his shots he sort of places his punches quite yeah but they're clearly very heavy handed he can yeah. clearly punch he has this kind of weird wiry power where you sort of you look at him you sort where does he get his power from it's not from his legs he doesn't load up on everything but it might be just turning at the waist or, or wherever it is yeah. but I think he could some people got that natural fast twitch where they can just do it like it's just weirdly weighty like his shots and I do feel like I think Gwyn being big at the weight and being down there for a while and don't get me wrong I did feel like he was getting to Marsili but I didn't think he looked great up to that point and I just think that Mark Chamberlain might be much better than, with respect to him, than he looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I just sure, think yeah. that maybe he'll get to him. Um, but it's a really good fight. I think Gwyn's kind of like that too. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, mm. for sure. But I think, I think, Mark, I think but what, Chamberlain I, has the more obvious power. Like, the, I think, yeah, I think what holds Gwyn back is, I think, for his style, if he had power, except even if I had power, I'd be better. Wouldn't I? But, you know, if he had, if he had more power, that that making you work hard and then making you pay in the later stretch would really make you pay mm. you know but he doesn't I don't he put, he's, he's more of a more of an arm puncher isn't he Gwyn he doesn't really turn too much into his shots sort of gets physical and on top of yeah, you no, he's like yeah, yeah. He, and he, he, he gets some other Chamberlain's work and give him a nightmare but I, I do I think Chamberlain might just show us something yeah okay. it's a good fight Andy it's getting exciting now we're going to come to you Ray Vargas versus Nick Ball well Ray Vargas no, two weight world champion, one defeat, not at this weight. Again, you have to install him as the favourite, but Ball is a very, very live underdog. That is. Oh, no. Well, Logan, right he, can stay we'll friend, he, he can stay friends with everyone, right? He can be friendly with everyone now, can he? Because he hasn't slagged anyone off. <laughs> not that I slag anyone off, but by saying that you're going to lose means I think you're a cunt, apparently. Can you bleep that out? Yeah, no, I <laughs> right, yeah. No, that's what it is. You say someone to lose, you, oh, you don't like me, do you? No, no that's, that's it. They think, they think yeah. that, that's yeah. what you want okay. to happen. But I, I, I think at this point, I mean, subbed out for the main top of the bill anyway. I'm just, no, I am on the top. I'm doing the undercard, so this might be part of that top of the bill thing, I hope. I think Ball's going to do something. I think Ball's going to get a win. I do. I think his energy and the way he, the way he spins on the target, close to the distance. I think he'll just. I think it'll be difficult for him early on. But I think as the rounds go on, I just think. He, I think. I just think he's, there'd be no deterrent for him. I just think he'd just be round after round. I don't think he'll worry about it. And he'll, he'll just keep applying the pressure, applying pressure. And and I think he'll have the same energy at round nine and the other round two. And I think I think Vargas will struggle with that at this sti at this stage of his career. This might be just a too much of a live wire for him but it's a hard night for him it's it's, it's, a, it's a massive step up for him it is mm. I just think he's gonna I just think he's gonna turn up I do and for what it means for his city the great f fighting city of Liverpool they say great fighting city I wear <laughs> the John Conte mean you know who's maybe the best one of the best we've ever so he says oh, why do people who, who people done always we've got loads of scousers watching whoever done now. it you know John Conte was, oh, he's an all time great like that's it that's it really, isn't it no but I mean no because Paul Hodgson had that had that, had that. and Paul, Paul was a fantastic fighter my, my you know growing up Paul's been a couple years older than me so watching him was fantastic he had that WBC featherweight title to get that as well another another scouser and I really hope he's from the same area Kirby's Kirby, Kirby, yeah. yeah. I don't know where. Yeah, it. balls from Kirby. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Then same area. Written in the stars. It's written in the stars, isn't it? Same weight, same area, same. Actually, the same. I think he wasn't very tall either, was he? Hodgson, he's not five foot five, I think. He just got so overshadowed, didn't he? By he was around at the same time as Ben and Eubank and all of. And yeah. And Bruno yeah. and. Mm. Nas. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. He's early nineties, yeah, wasn't he? Won it in well, like nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he won. I remember. I remember the. I remember the night he, he, he got beat in ninety three. I remember. I won. A, I won a fight. I won my first eight rounder. I mean, he won like, he made, like two he, or three he got defenses, beat against a Mexican Vargas. I mean, he like made three defenses, yeah, yeah. Did he? Got beat by a. a, it was a good reign. Got beat by a Mexican or Vargas, and then he boxed Steve Robinson. Then, and then Steve won the WBO title. Got beat. But he was a really good fighter. So I, I, I just think, I just think that all the, all the push for him. I just think he's. It's his time. I think time is everything. You know, time is everything in fights in in boxing, isn't it? I think maybe he gets Vargas a few years earlier, then he, he 
just be able, just can't get past that long reach. But I think he will. I think he'll find a way. I'm gonna go for Ray Vargas. I think yeah. the it's proven. Sensible. That's a sensible yeah, pick. I, I but think. I, I, and I really do like Nick Ball, and I'm not saying that just because I've picked against him. But yeah, I, he's a great fighter to watch. He's really entertaining. The scouts, Javante Davis. But I just think the proven entity in Ray Vargas, and stylistically, it does favour Ray Vargas. Yeah. And he's not uh, against Osharki Foster. I guess the one thing that would that sort of gives me caution is that he didn't look the sturdiest but that was up at super featherweight against mm, so yeah. I know Sh- Sharky Foster's not a massive puncher but he can punch his weight he's fast yeah he's a good fighter punches you won't see and he's tough as well he's shown the last yeah. two fights so tough he is faster yeah. um, but I just, just I really wanted to see Nick Ball against either Ray Vargas or Brandon Figueroa because they're two yeah. big guys different mm. styles like Figueroa's gonna come forward and smother you that would be an unbelievable yeah. fight by the way but I just yeah I think Vargas, if no, you're, you're, making it, right, you're making the right, you're making the right choice, him, you are, mate. But if he's got, Actually. if he's still got what he had when he boxed Mark Magsayo, I think he wins a decision. But he has some rough moments, like but he but did against Mark Magsayo. No, you're making yeah, the right choice. Need it. Nick, he fucking hates you. <laughs> hates you. I don't know what his problem is. Man. What's his problem? No, uh, yeah, no, you, I think you're making that's a sensible pick, and it is, and, and you should really go for that because the body of work says that, and and Vargas can control the distance really well because he boxes that way. No. Like, so he doesn't come forward but you and allow you. But but I I just I got a, I just got a feeling, which is absolute bollock when you think about it. I just got a feeling, and because Nick Nick Ball can close that distance really quick, I just think the energy, I think the energy at this stage of Greg's career is the last thing he needs. I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I, I just don't get. I mean, it's it's always possible that. Yeah, Vargas turns in a really good performance. Ball's not been up at that kind of level, and it's and he just can't find a way past it. But what I don't think will happen is that he'll get out there and freeze in any no, way. No, definitely not. I think he's going to go. Know, yeah. It's all a bit too much for him. That yeah, that no. won't happen. He he he's strong. So whatever does happen, I feel like he'll walk away from it. He, if he walks away from it without the title, he'll walk away from it. Well, having had a very very valuable experience. And, and much the better for it. Yeah, and it could, it could be the kind of fight. And where loads of time to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Loads of time. I mean, it's come. I was quite surprised again. that they made it now. Um, great fight, and he I could well win. I would just say that I think Nick Ball will win, but you know they're going against the grain. But Nick, I'd never lose to a fight of your size. I love that. Love you, Freddie. I, 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 you make me look tall. Come on, what's the matter with you? I, mean, you, I know you got a few muscles and stuff. I'll never see. I don't need him. He's on the. He's on the Queensbury bill. I was going to say, they keep you away from the they, main they, they, Yeah, yeah. Say, well, well, <laughs> <laughs> Unless it be, Eddie Hearn signs Nick Bob. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I do. I, yeah, I just, yeah. It's, just a, great, it's a really good fight. It's another really good fight, actually. Yeah. Okay, right, down to the Evies, the Evieweights. Barry, Gilles Zhang versus Joseph Parker. You've already sort of answered this in your <laughs> thing, but go again. Yeah, I, I, I think Zhang stops him. I do. I don't know when could be round one, round twelve. Um, I I think it, I think it'll go. I think it'll go a few rounds. I think Park is very very tough. Oh, just depends who he approaches it. I th- it's not like the round that Park can win. I don't think he can not win. I just think so. I think, but if they're gonna continue in the same vein of his best performance of his career, which is against you know Wilder, then going that route won't work I think he gets caught coming in because Zhang can throw punches he's technically a million times better than, than, than Wilder not as concussive a hitter but probably heavy handed and he can punch long and short he'll p- catch you coming in he'll catch you coming out he can throw short up cuts in between he's a southpaw as well he gets that foot on the outside if he sh- if he's trained as he as he has in his last few fights his engine will be a little bit better as well so you'll be able to maintain that pace for at least a minute of every round rather than 20 seconds but that's all you need uh, and I think because Park is tough he will commit to the task and he keeps banging on the wall I just think he just every time he hits that wall he comes away the worse off and in the end he ends up being a easier target commits to an ass- I, I just see, I can just see him somewhere down the line later in the fight or from around 7 on committing to an attack but a little bit tighter so a little bit more wild and looser and getting caught with the shot coming in coming in and, and, and that being it to be honest yeah I hope I'm wrong because I really like him no <laughs> no I, do, I generally you generally if, if anyone's met Joseph Packer which you, you both have he's a really nice bloke isn't he like uh, Ge- 
Yeah, he is. No, he's not to you. He's not no, he's a lovely guy. Just what says it. Rob thinks you're a prick. So no. I was, uh, I was were you Andy Clark from Sky or whatever Queen? No, I've got well, well, yeah, well, I'm there for both. Hey, actually. Slag. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there for got two hats yeah, in my uh, yeah. in my bag. I mean, well, the Sky said they might use me for some stuff on on the build. There you go. But then I, I said I want. It's all peace of love. It's hands across the water. It's, it's, great, it's spirit great. of collaboration. It's great. Yeah. I'll be on TNT next week. The way it's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, steady on. Uh, <laughs> no, the football. But the reason I said that, I, just, so I, was, I, was, I was doing some. Uh, I was doing some um, cleaning in the house over the weekend. So I, I'm oh, very messy. So I was, I, so I was cleaning. What, what I was There's doing? Brushing was, crumbs off your belly. That's not I was, clean. I was, I was, I was changing my, like my, <laughs> home, my home office into a nursery. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. 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 So um, I went through and I've got like as every boxing. You haven't got any kids, person, by the way. That's weird. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, and I, everyone's got like stacks of boxing stuff in their office or wherever you store stuff. And I have a so I have a bottle of Jameson's that Joseph Parker gave to me the morning after Joe Joyce knocked him out. So I was sat down in the um, I was sat down in the hotel. So you you nicked the bottle of Jameson's? No, no, no. Concussed so, so boxer. And then John Parker, Joe's brother, came down. I sat down in the in the lobby the day after, and he came up to me. He's like, "Oh, come upstairs." He's like, "Joe's, Joe's having a few beers." And he's like, Pacific Island, the boys, they don't mess around me. Shouldn't have been after. No, no, he shouldn't. But anyway, um, I'm not going to tell him. So I went up, and there's an issue. So in his hotel room, it's like Joseph Parker, Joseph Parker's dad, who is like what you'd expect him to be he's massive man. Yeah. he's a huge yeah. guy and you've got Poissa and if you would have seen Poissa out in yeah. Poissa again another like Samoan like 25 stone beast of a guy and they've got this like hotel table like a circus and it's literally just full of cans of beer and Parker's sat there and he's got his glasses on because obviously it's a really hard fight against Joe Joyce and I remember and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying he said to me um, so, so what do you think I should do next I meant Joe this is like what the fuck is the end of September or something. I was like, I have fucking Christmas, come back in the New Year. It's a hard fight. Like it was a hard fight, blah blah blah. Yeah, I think I want to box in December. And I was like, okay, right. Sort of weird thing. And then before we wrapped up, he'd give me the he was drinking the Jamesons and he'd give me the it's still three quarters full. I want him to sign it, so it's a good little memento. And he said, I'll see you in December. I remember leaving the hotel room thinking, Fucking hell man, that guy's mental. Like he's just been <laughs> battered by Joe Joyce. So like, fucking if he boxes in December, he might not never fight again. Twelve months later, he goes and beats Deontay Wilder. So mm, now I want him yeah. to go and sign that yeah. that Jameson's <laughs> bottle. So yeah, big up Joseph Parker. I do think he'll win. I do think he'll beat Zhang. I think yeah. he'll, he'll be very, very, very careful early. And I think already. it will be. I just think it will be close. I don't think he'll give Zhang. And I don't know about Zhang cutting the ring off if he is. I don't. I know he's not the fleet-footed Parker that box Joshua. But I think that Parker can stay out of trouble for 12 rounds against him. And if he can stay out of trouble, I think he can nick enough rounds. That's that his only way, though. Yeah, I, d I don't think he can stand there and have it with him like he did with Joe Joyce, even, because I think Zhang is a much faster, shorter puncher than he's even Joyce was. He's better than all those fighters, yeah, yeah, yeah. really. And he's 20 stone and can really whack with either hand. But I just think Parker, as, as what you said earlier, Andy, I think he's on that. He's had he's, yeah, four fights in a year, culminating in a win over Deontay Wilder. They've got their mojo back over there, and it's just difficult. Like momentum, such an important thing and such a big thing. But having said that, Jang's got Jang. momentum. Yeah, it's a really difficult one to call for that. Beautiful reason. fight. Just, yeah, I mean, you you know, Jang's comprehensively beaten Joe Joyce twice, who beat Parker. So if you look at that, then you would make Jang the favourite. But Parker's just beaten Deontay Wilder, who's better than any of Jang's wins. So well, you we know, we're talking about. I remember we were talking about the only as good as your last fight. I think it was on the last yeah. podcast, isn't it? Who's the best heavyweight in the world? Parker. If you're as good as your last yeah. fight, Parker, then Fury, then um, Parker, then Garner, then Shane. Garner, then Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fury, and Usyk, and Usyk, and Usyk, and Usyk, and Usyk, and Fury, and Usyk, not even in the top five. You go based on your last yeah. performance, really. That, that, but that's that. You know, that's what makes it a really. It's it, it, again another really good fight. Dubois. Yeah. He had a really good performance against um, Joe Miller. We have somebody. I don't. Somebody's going to tweet me about this. I forgot his name. I'm really sorry. Who keeps tweeting me every week saying, "When are we getting the Daniel Dubois Jarrell Miller review?" So somebody every week is just adamant. I thought he boxed really well. I think it was maybe yeah, before, it was the second best performance of the night. Yeah, yeah. You got really really pack of the performance of the night, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. But he, I think he boxed really well because all right, Miller's the guy who's who's you know he's too overweight and you know but he's full of stuff, isn't he? And then you know full of muscle and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, but you know, but you still you still got to do the job, especially after you know the criticism and, and the clearly yeah. problems he has with with 
with um, panic, people sticking it on him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He panics. He panics. And he was doing I, it wrong. He was doing it wrong, and I could see a position where he might run out of gas and. Or After three get, or four rounds, yeah, you're yeah, looking at it thinking, mm. or it get written. It, it was already getting yeah. hard, but I just thought if this gets much harder, then we have seen him mm. bail out of fights a couple of times. Circumstances being what they were, you know, we can kind of understand it and explain it, but boxers look at it differently. Mm. You know, they a lot of question marks are asked there, and I thought we're getting to that point now where that could happen again. But he dug in and, and and refused to allow that to happen. Okay, Miller's not a top top guy, but he's massive, S- style wise, full of confidence as well. That's yeah. one exactly. of the worst fights you can and have. And I think before. I think I think that did. I think I think in the context of Dubois' career, I think it was just a massive win for him. It was the perfect a fight for Daniel Dubois. And, it was. He and if he'd lost, he was basically. Yeah, it really Frank Warren really t- said to us during the week, pretty much, if he can't do it against Miller, then. Then we're done with him almost. Mm. And and he was disciplined. Listen to the corner. From yeah, eventually uh, he did. Yeah, he but I, I think, but then in the last round, he never <coughs> and he had a better result. Yeah. In the end. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, you know what I mean? He but didn't, then he but, did, but then I think he, he was, I think he was quite, he was quite important. I think they got him and, him and, you know, they got a really good bond now. At least he's on Charles. Really yeah. he, he's chucking yeah, his hat in the ring for everything. Fit for Dubois, also, isn't he? I think I don't know Don that well, but he seems like a proper broke Don. I've met him a few times. I, I really like him, but that's irrelevant. But I mean, but I think he's the sort of guy who will you know, try and do things the right way. But I think he also will say, do it. Yeah, yeah, do, definitely. We'll, yeah, he's, we'll yeah, have, don't take no mess in Don. He will have yeah. bully you in. He will bully you to do something for the right reason, which is yeah. sometimes you need that. In yeah, the corner. and I do, I do, I do feel as well like, like what are you panicking for? What the, yeah, just, yeah. What are you panicking? It's, it's that kind do of it. thing. It's that kind of thing, and I do feel like, and a lot of people don't. You know, I haven't found that many people who agree with me on this, but I do feel like as a trainer, you can that that bravery, that kind of. That kind of like seam of bravery, if you like, it's got to be there, or you've or you've got no chance. But but a good trainer can really kind of can kind of mine it and force it out of yeah. you. you. And I feel like I think you feel like you can force bravery out of a fighter. You can teach them to be braver. And I know against Usyk, eventually he went down from a you know not too much and stayed there. The previous round he went down and looked like he was going to stay there and then didn't. And at the end of that fight, I felt... And in between rounds, Don was saying to him, don't, I saw that. I saw what you nearly did there. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking do it. And I know in the next round, he did do it. But I walked away from that fight feeling like that was progress. Yeah, yeah. And sure, it's, not, agree, it's yeah. not as simple as, oh, you know, either you've got that or you haven't got it. And if you've done it once, you're more likely to, go, to do it again. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that is a true... That's, that's true. That's, it's not, it doesn't guarantee you will do it again. It doesn't guarantee it, But it's though. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it doesn't guarantee it. It doesn't mean that you definitely, definitely... Does, you know, I think you... Because there are certain think, things in sport where people say you've either got it or you haven't. And one of them is that. Another one is punching power. Like, you can't teach someone to punch. Like obviously, there's like yeah. that real natural. Some, yeah, some, now, some people naturally. Some things, out, some things that you know, that the adages say cannot be taught. I think they can. Everyone, th- if, I, if the raw materials are there. I think not everyone. But I think anyone who's been boxing for long enough has been in the in the gym, in the ring, not in the gym, in the ring, and has felt like quitting. Yeah, yeah I, I felt like quitting in the fight I was winning. By the way, it was just so hard. My first really hard twelve round, and I just went, oh. <sighs> I think it's, it's your, a fleeting, it's a fleeting thought, and you but, fight. But back also, I think I think it's your reaction to it, isn't it? I think the real danger about about if 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 you do it once, and you kind of you're all right with it, yeah, then then you're obviously going to do it again. Yeah. But if you do it once and you're absolutely mortified, yeah, next maybe you're not going to do it again. Blue, it? Yeah. <laughs> Right, we have one more to get done. We've we've ru- we've run. Ma- we were supposed to do two here. We've still run over. Anyway, yeah, we're still getting charged for two, mate. Uh, Barry, <laughs> Anthony Joshua versus Francis and Gone. Uh, oh. <laughs> the reputation of the sport <laughs> depends on it. Um, <laughs> now, I I think Joshua stops him. What? In about seven rounds, maybe eight, out of exhaustion. I think I think that's what should happen. If caveat asterisk asterisks all over, that should be all over his dressing gown. I should, but um, if he he's assertive and believes in himself, and then Gan, who's not this, <laughs> you know, that's what I think. That's what I think should happen. I think he should come in being positive, strong behind the jab, in and out with the feet, uh, allowing Gan to throw a fresh air, keep him 
th- um, second guessing every movement you make, put him, make him a reactive fighter who's trying to be aggressive, and just chipping away at the tree. And slowly, then but surely, he's you know, a big, massive lump of a man who's a danger. Every time he touches you, he can knock you out. Will just be too tired to do anything, because it's all like you know. You might be super strong and you and at your stuff, but this is, you're you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, not being able to do anything. That's a tiring place to be, and a panicking place to be because you can't hold and rip his neck off, and you, and you know and you if you can't get a big power shot on him, then you, you know, you're just swinging your big arms and you're missing you have to mm. pull back. Like I, just what I thought I was saying exactly the same thing against <laughs> what well, he should well would happen against him against Tyson Fury, but I don't think he's going to find it hard with with Joshua if, if it's the Joshua I, I hope and think's going to turn up, who keeps his shape really well. He's going to have a man in front of him, but not a clear target to hit. That's going to be the difference. I think people, oh, he's in front of him though, but he's not he, that in and out movement with that tight guard. He's going to try and look for the target, and and off that he might lose his shape trying to find a different angle to the shot. Or I'm totally wrong. Well, we'll see. For that. It's weird, it's this is the fight where you always go, fucking like, yeah, 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 don't yeah. ask me. <laughs> well, well, Joshua, you have to make him a heavy favourite off the back of his last performance, but also because he's an Olympic gold medalist and former two-time unified heavyweight champion of the world. And he's, and more, than one, and he's had more than one fight. <laughs> Francis Ngannou's had one fight. He's had a win in his professional <laughs> boxing yeah. career. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go for Joshua. I'm going to go for Joshua Point, and I think there will be a couple of hairy moments. I think I think like, I never I didn't think Ngari would win a second of any round against Fury. No, um, and I was very very surprised with with how well he did. And mm. I just think he I is. I wanted him to win. I did after about seven. Like I, I, I after about seven rounds, all that stuff about the reputation of the sport. When I was there live, after seven rounds, I didn't think he was winning. I didn't think he was going to win either. I didn't have him as a winner. And I'm like the, the people I was working with wasn't quite sure. But um, well, actually, they saw the Ngari win. But I, I was like. Just because the whole story and what he's yeah, done, and, yeah. the, and and he shouldn't be even be at the races. I almost want him to win on that, mm. and forget about the reputation of the sport because we yeah, saw that I mean, a long time ago. Reputation of the sport, he's hours now, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. He's boxing. Isn't he hours now? He's, he's, he's a boxer. Claims now, isn't he? Him. He can claims be what, him in he, the listen, name of he can be what he wants to be. All I know, right, is that after that, because the excitement, the buzz around him, he's a welcome addition, isn't he? You have to but say that. You have to say that. But and I think he will have a couple of moments. You know, the sport could that happen. But I think Joshua will win a decision. I think. I do think, like, as well prepared as I fully expect Joshua and, and Ben Davison, etc., to be, we don't know enough about him, and you don't know. No, you, you, don't, yeah. you don't know. Like, and, and I do feel like when he gets in there, the first clinch is going to be, oh, shit, this is... This is, this, well, this is the mad thing. They've got 10 rounds to watch. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, as his trainer said, as Jimmy Cooper said, said, said to me, you know, we'll be a lot better the second time around. And it's difficult to kind of argue with that. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Most, it's most difficult to know if that doesn't necessarily like mean it will turn out to be the case because a lot of it depends on what the person in front of you is up yeah. to. But, but I mean, that could well turn out to be true. Okay, right. We're going to wrap things up. It's been a super long bonus episode. Well, not been a bonus episode. It's next this week's episode. Next week's episode, but it's fine, of the boxing show. Let us know in the comments who you think will win this weekend. Will it be Anthony Joshua? Will Francis Ngannou shock the boxing world again? From us here on The Boxing Show, the award-winning boxing show. Catch up with you next time. Mr. Barry Jones and Mr. Andy Clark, thanks very much. Hey, 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 hey.